Hello, everyone. Welcome back for another week of Growing With My Fellow Growers. I'm your host, Jack Greenstock, joined, as always, by an amazing panel. I'm going to pass it over first to Matthew Gates. Hey, everyone. It's Matthew Gates, Integrated Pest Management Specialist. And yeah, um, I'm excited to talk today because I went to the free seed day, so I'll be talking about my experience there. Good stuff. Definitely excited to hear more about that. Next up, we've got Noah the Roa. How's it going, everybody? I'm Noah the Grower. Uh, I've been growing for a while and uh, happy to be here. We are always happy to have you. And last and certainly not least of the panelists who are currently with us, we might have some others jumping on a little bit, the American one. Hello, Jack panel and everyone in chat. I am the American one on the YouTube and the American one underscore with underscore Keens over on the IG. And it's always good to be here. And uh, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm looking forward. Better than looking backwards, I always say, you know, but uh, living in the present is good too. Happy to be here this week. I am going to go ahead and type out and copy over the link into the YouTube chat so anybody can jump in and join because we're doing open panel and Q&A. So feel free to start dropping your questions and tagging us. But Matthew, I'd like to hear a little bit about that free seed day and uh, your experience. Yeah, so um, so it was yesterday, so that's April 13th. And like I was saying earlier, before we got on air, I'm not sure what the significance of the date is or if they're, or if it's the same date every every uh, year or anything like that. But that's when it was. Um, it was nice. It was right next to a shop called Highly Likely, <laughs> which is a good name, in Los Angeles. And so living in San Diego... Um, it, it was an easy trip to get up there. Now, I went there around um, like 3-ish. I got there about 3-ish p.m. And I stayed there only for a few hours, to be honest. Only until about 6, uh, a little bit over 6, actually. Um, and then I hightailed it back because I had things to do. And um, it was a good experience. So I got to see people who might know him on Instagram as Poetry of Plants. But I got to see Nelson Lindsay good guy um and i got to see masonic of course uh because it's his event and then i also got to see a bunch of local people some of which are from san diego like um hummingbird hills hum hummingbird hills who I, who I also saw represented at the uh soil summit in Pahrump, nevada so that was kind of interesting it was interesting to see some people some of the cross you know movement of, of folks between la and san diego which i often like to talk about um, it was in an office building sort of decor, and apparently there were people who were uh, camping out the night before to, to get in and to get seeds, which I also received seeds, although I had no expectations about what I wanted or anything like that. I was asking earlier uh, if I got something I wanted. Um, actually, from Nelson, I got something he calls candy pain, which he was giving out. And so I did get a pack of that, but I could go over the seeds with us um, here. And I'm excited to hear everyone's uh, opinions about them because most of these names and, and groups don't mean too much to me, but I will say that there was a lot of really great um, hash and flower um, as there often are at these events. So it kind of goes without saying, but it should be said. And uh, there were um, grow documents and even plants that were being given out and other sorts of things. And uh, yeah, I, I, without being ter too circuitous, um, yeah, it was a really good event and I would definitely go again. And I think that I probably should have gone a lot earlier, but you know, I had things going on at the time. I almost didn't go uh, because of it, but I'm glad that I went. So for those of you who wanna go, um, I think it's really worth it for the average person, even the above average person, the excellent person, I don't know. But if you're the other two groups, you should go. <laughs> so should I just go to the seeds or does anyone want to uh, opine? Yeah, now I'm on the edge. Right We're now. all waiting so, on the edge. So... We want to know what seeds you got and from who. Okay. So in no particular order, out of the bag, we have, of course, the candy pane. I don't know uh, the pedigree. Nelson didn't. Nelson probably told me, but I don't remember it and it's not on the package. So I don't know. Maybe somebody can do some sleuth working in the meantime. So no no particular order. We also have this uh this reg auto bred by Alien Alchemy Academy. 
which is apparently strawberry milk and cookies with a Q with a cross with chem candy and chem cookies with a Q. Okay, that's one. One down. Next one is from Black Bear Nursery. And this is strawberry apricot cross with 90 micron. That's a hash strain. That's a hash strain, okay. Yeah, and and feel I'll free tell to like you interrupt how you know. me. Yeah, I want to comment on that kind of stuff. Yeah, Jack, what's up? So when you read the name, if you just hear 90 micron, that's referring to a bag, which is like often considered like the gold bag, like the bag that dumps, the bag that has the meltiest, best resin. Sometimes people just pull and separate the 90. It used to be the 73 for a little while, then people started moving towards the 90, I think. It just depends on the genetic. Uh, it can be even, the 45 can really give, but for the hash headies out there, that 90 micron is a significant, it's like, a, I don't know, like number 23 Michael Jordan. Like, you know, it's like Jordan shoes or something, you know, like it's like a culture mark in the cannabis, uh, that side of the scene. Now, when you say that, I just want to confirm Now, I obviously know that like that's in reference to like the micron bags and things like that and hash making, but, but that's also the name of the, the, the cultivar or the population or whatever. So that also has that legacy as well, not just the nomenclature. I'm thinking that the name implies that it does well in growing Oh, well, sure. resin for that size. Yeah. I, I haven't Okay. actually grown it or experienced it, but when I heard you uh, list it off, if you can just say the genetics again, I'm sure it's probably a hash rain Yeah, cross with yeah, hash no, rain. you were right. Strawberry apricot crossed with a uh, uh, cultivar called 90 micron, 90 micron. Yeah, exactly. I, Yeah, so... I mean, that's what I would think too when I when I read this as well. Well, and strawberry apricot is also a very good hasher. Um, a lot of the strawberry... Oh, okay. Like strawberry banana crosses. Strawberry banana is one of the best hashers of all time, um, up there with like cookies and cream. Um, but yeah, there's a few that yield really high percentage in the uh, ice water hash game, which a lot of stuff you can yield as low as like 1% or less, which uh, from fresh frozen materials, a bummer. So if you get those 5% to like seven or eight, like really high returns, um, people tend to hang on to them. So I'm curious. It'd, it'd be uh, fun to see what you find from there. The next one is, I think it's called Deep, no, uh, yeah, so it seems to be called Deep Purple, which is apparently Vintage Lime crossed with UB Chemo, and I, th I think that's what this is, the chemo letter U, the U, the letter U, the letter B, and then Chemo, UB Chemo. I don't know what that, what the U and the B stand for, if anything. university of uh, something i think i think it's like a Oh, maybe. like a college strain um, i could be wrong there's like a u-dub which is a university of washington strain and uh, some of the purples but ub chemo I'm, it, it rings a bell i just can't put my finger on it right now Neat. And then that that's and so that parent is then crossed with grape lime skunk, supposedly. That sounds good to me. Oh, by the way, every pretty much everyone in this list in this bag has a pretty nice bag game, to be honest. Um do wish that containers and things were a little bit more uh sustainable, but um barring that, people definitely know the importance of making things look attractive. This is just from And it Leafly, was but it says, rumor has it that chemo is beginning stretched back to 1970s in Canada, where the heavy indica was alleged to be developed to treat the side effects of chemotherapy. Another name for this strain is UBC chemo, in reference to the university in which chemo is said to be conceived. Chemo's genetics is carried on by Jordan of the Islands, who's a respected breeder up in Canada, uh, and has done lots of good work, featured in 50 Strands of Green, by the way, if anybody's interested. Um, whose rendition is best known for its subtle woody aroma, potent medicinal effects, and perfect patients treating nausea, appetite loss, pain, and sleeplessness, which are all commonly experienced from those going through chemotherapy. Very Sounds nice. like a shit. Interesting. Yeah. Next one is, uh, this is from universally seeded. Um, is that the company name? I guess so. These are feminized seeds. Um, animals XJ13, which uh, sounds strikingly close to a Chinese jet fighter. And that is XJ13 with an asterisk, whatever that means, crossed with cement shoes. And then, oh, is this, this supposed to be multiplication? I guess. <laughs> Yeah, maybe like a Uh, times. and then I, I guess so, yeah. Uh, but then they have an X, right? So it's kind of like, Well, unless that's also animals might be crossed with 
thirteen. Is that what that's the the kerning is all messed up in this? The XJ thirteen might be like a special cut. Maybe that's where there's like a a star, like an asterisk, like it's a good cut of XJ thirteen or something like that. Interest. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm yeah. I'm trying to be as best as possible with this, but we've also got another Jack Herr cross with, or yeah, Herrera like terror, Herrera like terror, <laughs> Jack Herr and cross with. G13 Hayes. That's old school. So, Where's that from? so they say, yeah. But that that was nice. That was a nice um and and the packaging is kind of neat. Uh and then also from Lifted Breeders Crew, we have um GMO cross with Mendo Perps. Neat. That's a then, that's a good one there. Oh yeah, yeah. Why do you say that? But GMO is in my opinion, better cross than it is on its own, but it's just good on its own. It's got a lot of funky, garlicky uh, notes to it. Its yield is pretty outrageous if you actually take it to like full. It's usually more of like a 10, 11 weeker, uh, more on the 11, like 77, 78 day. But it is insane for making good, high quality dry sift rosin and other concentrates and having that strong garlic, almost like body odor-ish stuff come through. But then the uh, Mendo Perps, is kind of old school, like early, one of the earliest purples in Humboldt or Mendo, I should say. And um, it's basically just a pure um, land race from either uh, Afghanistan or Pakistan. And it may even be a cross of the two of those, but it goes way back. So some really old school, good shit. That was good then and still good now on its own across to a pretty modern and also really good strain. I just can't imagine it having very many Poor offspring, but you never know. That's why you got to grow them out and uh, figure out if they live up to the uh, parental lineage. Ain't that the truth? This is from Cultivate Kings. And this is a, I think it's Nix, like N I X, like to Nix something, a cross with Kool Aid. But we don't have a name for it that I can see on the package. Which means I can just name it, right? I think that's what that means. This is, and then I also have a, a Skittles Tropical Punch crossed with Wilson, uh, crossed with. It's got to be OG. But that's a very, that's a very funny O. <laughs> Anyways, this was like, I mean, this, authentically, this is written on the back of a, like a card you would get in uh, elementary school to like write your note cards on. Uh, but that's nice. By a true class genetics. Oh wow! I'm surprised. Like, whenever I hear Wilson, I always think Masonic immediately because that's like true all clouds. Of his life. Could that be true clouds, man? The calligraphy Whoa. is not the greatest. And my handwriting is awful too. So shout out to anybody out there with the chicken scratch. It uh, must be doctors, honestly. Or or arthritis, like me playing football, I broke all my fingers, so I shake like a motherfucker. So when I write, it's just like I I can hardly read it half the time later on. So. You know, honestly, it's bad. I'm the same way. Uh, this is from this is Stinky Cake, which is Cake Boss Cross's little stinker. <laughs> <laughs> I love from, that. Yeah, I know, right? This is from Greenfish Cannabis, I believe. You had, how you had a QR, QR code. How many different packages have you? Did you get? How many what seeds in the package? Good question. No, and Good how question. many different packs also? Yeah, well, let me go through all of these. I'll go through all these. Um, and then, all right, all right. And yeah, like yeah, yeah. Like how, we've these... gone through like five or ten. Like, what's how yeah, what that's already a lot. Is it like fifty percent, seventy five. Okay, okay, okay. Because like, how I far are we through what you got? Us. Some of things you, some of these you can't tell very well, but like at the extreme end, I'm getting only like two or three seeds, like with this Cultivate Kings, this uh, Nix and Kool Aid, for example. But um, the. Uh, this is Giddle's Tropical Punch. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, like ten ish. Um, from the the GMO and Mendo Perps, we got one, two, three, four, five, like seven ish. From the animals, I can't tell. How many other strains uh, have you not named yet that you still uh, have to review? Only like there's just four. Oh, okay. So we're like a little over halfway through. Your, yeah, we're uh, practically done. Your um haul, I guess some people would call this. Yeah, yeah. I guess so. It was it was very very uh, very generous and uh, honestly I just wanted to meet Nelson and uh, a few other people and um, yeah.
But okay, so let's go through this. So five pack genetics. This says Alma on it. Um, there is a this is an unmistakable actual nerds candy, um, like the candy uh label that they put on here. Um <laughs> authentic bird seed souvenirs, regular photo period sensitive for the birds. Um from yes, yeah, this is from five pack genetics. This is Afghan number gosh. Man, you guys picked the the best. lettering this is probably a one that i'm looking at and number one cross with this is this is spelled brazil not brazil but b-r-a-z-i-a-l amazonia oh oh so, sorry brazil amazonia cross then with silver afghan warlord what a strong name I've heard of a few different ones like that. The, I mean, some of them, that's where they originate. So the name is fitting or was at a time, I guess. Things have changed there a lot over the last couple decades, but still kind of an interesting place. Bruce Banner, don't get him mad. <laughs> Next one is Rainbow Escobar. Uh, I guess this is from Masonic Seed Co. Yeah, look, look at that for free, for free seed day. That's nice. I mean, did I get, I don't know, but kind of not too, not, not, uh, not uh, too little, I would say. It only takes And one. then we have, it only takes one, as long as it's not a male. Even then, sometimes that male might be, you know, fuck around I mean, and yeah, have that's a little true, problem. actually. That's a good point. That's right. It only takes one. That's true. That's, that's definitely a good point. Um, that's still true. So this is a, next one is a cereal milk cross with garlic mince cross with strawberry gogurt. 12 regular seeds, they say it on the label. That's nice. They even put a little cushion in the uh, little um, uh, capsule. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, or no, 12, yeah, as they said. But um, I don't know who this is from. It's just a picture of a dude with pink glasses, sunglasses, and a hot pink blazer, hot pink undershirt, and a dripped out icy cross necklace. I don't know who, and, and in the background, there's like an NBC logo. <laughs> so I don't know who that is. I think it might But be Secret uh, hopefully Society that was. Seed Co. I could be wrong. I've seen that logo before. Now that you're describing it, like the it's like a silhouette of a person, like standing kind It's of a, beside. it's actually you can see a picture. It seems to be a, a a real human being, but maybe that's the silhouette logo that they go with. Yeah. It's interesting. I, I uh, it's funny to have a logo and then not have a name associated with it, but you know sometimes. Maybe it's inside here. Maybe it's inside here. Should I open it? I mean, it's all it's it's sealed and packed. I wasn't really gonna. You don't have to. Yeah. All You right, can last keep it one. raw as a potential regift if uh, you ever want There it. you go. There you go. Yeah. Hattori Hanzo. Regular photo period seeds from Yokai. Brad uh Babadook crossed with Jawa Kush. Hattori Hanzo seeds. I like That's that Jawa a strong Kush. name. Yeah. I think Jawa Kush Yokai. was a You don't want to mess with any yokai. Ocean grown is, uh, I think, Jawa Kush. I could be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure that is where the Jawa Kush came from. It's pretty good shit. Smoked a few times. And then two I honorable mentions for hash that I um, tried out. One of them was from a, a, a cultivar called Spritzer, which was really nice and super gassy and, and, and citric and limey. And... And and fusel and and gassy yeah and then the other one which probably the best thing I had which was um, it's called mental breakdown and that was by head change I think they're called and that was pretty amazing uh, hit you like a like a runaway train <laughs> um, and yeah that it was a really great event and I encourage people to go to it especially since I've often talked about how Southern California in general is a little fragmented and it's just always endearing to see the threads and connections strengthen over time. So, yeah. So will you will, will you be popping it? any what will you do first or you... Oh yeah. You know, this is, so here's where the shame starts. 
I really wish I could give you an answer. I didn't even plan to like, I, I didn't know, like, cause there are people who were lining up. So my impression having never gone before was I actually didn't want to deprive other people of getting any seeds. I didn't know what the availability would be. So I had no like expectations. Like I said, I mainly wanted to go there to uh, hang out with Nelson and a couple of other people uh, just to, to kick it with them. Right, right. I don't really plan. I don't really plan on doing any of these, to be honest. Okay. So, if but but if you had to ask, if you had asked me which one I thought would be interesting to try out first, I actually do have an opinion. What do you got? Um, yeah, yeah. So I kind of liked. Um, I mean, Jack's recommendation about the ninety micron was interesting, but I really liked the 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 GMO cross with Mendo perp. Um, like this is totally 100% just speculated on the other GMOs that I've had that I've tried that I like and also the packaging the little uh, <laughs> thing they put the seeds in um, it just looks very it's smaller than the rest of them it's just very unique so it's funny how that just and the label kind of just uh, catches my eye but that's marketing different for you there you go yeah yeah <laughs> And um, I'm very curious about the Hattori Hanzo because from the packaging, it's even in I can see the hiragana here. It's in Japanese and everything. Um, just neat. Just very interesting uh, display. And if they are from like Japan or East Asia or something like that, um, that's kind of neat to me. That would be pretty cool. That would be crazy. But you never know. Does But that maybe mean something I should start with the in authentic Japanese? bird seed. Does that mean something in Japanese that you can translate that's appropriate to say on the podcast? Oh, well, Hattori, I think um, that's either a person's name or a location. I forget. Yeah, that's the... Um, Hanzo wait. is often a person's name. That's Yeah. the guy who made the uh, sword and kill Bill, I believe. He's Oh, like Hattori the... Uh, Hanzo? Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right? Am I right? I think I'm Yeah. right. Well, there's a famous Hanzo, in, I think, in Japanese... Um, history as well. So Yeah, sometimes what do they call people. those? What do they call those? So, samurai sword thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He was a samurai. That's where Hanzo. Hadori Hanzo. Okay, there you go. I think he is the guy I'm thinking of. Yeah. <laughs> so you'll get like, it's like, it's like naming it like, um, it's like naming it like uh, Lancelot or like Sir Arthur or something <laughs> or Yeah, Excalibur. exactly. Something like Right. that. Yeah. <laughs> Kusanagi or something. Anyways, so yeah, that's, I mean, I just find that very interesting. Uh, places that are not from around here uh, are more interesting than places that are, but all of these look really interesting. Packages are nice. Um, yeah. Yeah, that I when I visited California the first time, I smoked some XJ13. Or yeah, X, I think it was XJ13, or is it just X? No, it was XJ13, and uh, yeah, I couldn't stop smiling. But I don't know if it was because it's just because I was in California for the first time. It was different then. It wasn't like it is today. Just as a caveat, because I don't think Which I'd is what? be smiling. what, what was it I don't during think I'd be. what was it during like Ronald Reagan's time? Like, what, No, what are we talking? okay, all I was right. I wasn't even born yet. What are you talking about? Okay, Um, yeah, no, no. Well, you well you were born no, it at was the that end. it was that it was Oaksterdam. You're constantly getting younger, so. Yeah, when Oaksterdam was um like in the highlight and thoroughly accepted and loved by everyone, and you could walk down the street and there was old ladies with gray hair rolling joints at the bus stop, literally, and everybody was smoking and smiling. And then yeah, Okay, I. now where in California were you? It was Oaksterdam, that block Oh, Oaks that, are damn uh, duh. Oh, Oakland there's, area, San Oakland Francisco. area, duh. yeah, Yeah, you see, there's sorry. Oakland, when they say Oakland, the, Oakland is different in different spots, just, Yeah, that's true. yeah, Like people Los are like, Angeles. you were in Oakland? I was like, yeah, they're like, that's Gang Central, but that's like the other side, it's, it's, yeah, but Living I there guess is different now, than visiting. no, now, however, it's all one, I believe, because from the pictures that I've seen, shit going down is getting crazy in Cali. But that's a sidetrack. I, yeah, that, whatever. Thanks, J13, definitely. I couldn't stop smiling. It's like that permagrin. And that reminded me of, like, uh, yeah, uh, weed that I like. So I would try that one with that. And the uh, G13 ash plant, you said it was in, in that cross, too. That sounds interesting to me, that one. 
That sounded old, like an old school, like like somebody you get from like a Mr. Nice catalog in like the early 2000s or like late 90s, you know. Noah, did any of the strains that he listed stand out to you? Which one do you think you'd pop first if you had to go in on some of those? What? Well, I like the uh, the GMO uh, Mendo purposes. That one with the two crosses, the GMO, I always kind of lean towards those. That's the one that caught by here. And uh, no, I'm just uh, tentatively listening. I don't know a whole lot about California or the Ronald Reagan era or any of that. So I'm learning. I'm learning all kinds of stuff from my fellow growers today. I love it. <laughs> we we had Reagan. We had the Governor Schwarzenegger. Earl. Yeah, it's an interesting state. I'll leave it at that. But we do have a great history of cannabis, and XJ13 is a cross of. Jack Herrera. I think there's maybe even J1 in there. I need to look it up to verify. But it's funny. That was actually one. <laughs> I feel bad now. But uh, I bought some Jack Herrera from like a delivery service shortly after moving back here uh, with my wife before I got the grow set up. And the dude shows up with XJ13. And I was like, I ordered Jack Herrera. He's like, yeah, it's XJ13. I was like, yeah, it's not the same. <laughs> it's, it's close. <laughs> But it's like, it's not the same fucking thing. So I was disappointed. I actually was like, you know what? I'm going to pass. And then they ended up sending another driver over who had a location that had Jack Herrera. And uh, you could smell it. Like, just t totally different. But they're both good. I just was really uh, particularly looking for Jack Herrera at that time. And uh, it's one that's still fond for me. You had a Jack Herrera cross in there as well, too, didn't you, Matthew? Jack Herrer. Sorry for the people yeah, out there who's going to call me out. Yeah. Fuck. I always fuck that up. So many people out here, I was in Cali and people were calling it Herrer, Herrer, Herrer. And then it's like, I see Jack and then like an interview. Oh, it's Herrer like terror. I'm like, oh. Herrer like terror. It's so close. It's so easy to Probably fuck up. Probably not the best mnemonic. But I know, uh, right? But the other thing <laughs> is, the, there's a million examples of that. The Likert versus Likert scale. It's like, if it looks like how it's written, people are going to just pronounce it wrong. They're going to read it how they interpret it even if you get ultra famous like i think you said there's some of the like car companies and things like that uh audi oh you know audi. i was talking to a dude at the soil at the soil summit caspar he uh is from germany and he was like uh um he he so he said he said mercedes like we say mercedes not mercedes or whatever they say in uh el aleman and i was like uh I was like, wow, so you say it like we say. It's like, well, no, like when I'm speaking English, he explained to me, like, it just rolls off the tongue better. But if I'm speaking German, I switch back to the the way that we say it. And I thought that was interesting, but it makes a lot of sense. I like when like I like when like news um or like uh some sort of uh informational organization like hires like a specialist and they're like talking about something, and you can tell like when they when they switch to talking about something from like a country maybe they're from or something like that, like they immediately, the accent and everything is perfect and they go straight back into like perfect English accent. And that's when, you know, you got somebody who's talented. So like, I was a bunch sure. of them now. Yeah. That, like they're so good at the English accent that, or the American English accent. Yeah. Sure. And they might be Australian or British or, you know, whatever else. And then they start speaking their native tongue. And you're like, what the fuck? Like, I thought they just spoke English, like uh, how we speak English. And it's they just go back to their normal way. It's like, holy shit, quite the surprise. We got Caveman joining us here in just a little bit. But uh, XJ13 was, uh, or well, is Jack Herrera, Jack Herrer, uh, across the G13 Haze. So interesting cross there. It's not uh, quite as, you know, the G13 Haze, it just depends on, you know, how far it leans, which direction. And uh, I've had some decent XJ13. I've definitely smoked it, other than that one time where I specifically did not order it. But yeah, it's a interesting one. I'm glad, Tao, that you have that memory and that experience. I hope and wish that everybody comes to California can have sort of a, you know, rose-colored glasses or, or maybe even just cheery-eyed, positive, happy, good time because so many of the times that I came here, not being from here, were amazing as a, you know, tourist. And then now living here, I do enjoy... Uh, vast amount of it like you know, 90 95 percent i think is like pretty fucking awesome most of the time and then there's very small little pockets 
around where I'm at where I'm like, oh, it you know, isn't the best or this kind of sucks, yeah, that well, kind of sucks. But you know, coming from New York, I probably have a different perspective than a lot of people. But and you you only see the bad, the worst of it when you you know on TV they'll they'll show the uh, I guess the Santa Rosa where there's like a bunch of RVs lined up. And you know everybody's everybody's shooting up like just stay like like yeah. I, I, but um, I heard stories of people that came oh, to New York City. Up. Like the first time uh, Ray Davies was in New York City, I think he got like petrified. He couldn't he couldn't perform on stage. He was too scared. All right, let me go, man. We have more important things to talk about. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. I was just spotlighting the uh, grow here. I was I was listening intently there, Tao. I just wanted to show off the uh, plants. Yeah, Tao, for the I mean, you know, mm-hmm. you can check out any time you like, but you can never leave. It's true. So, like, we got you for thirty more California. minutes. Damn it! Sorry, what up, caveman? I said Hotel California. That's right. What are That's we looking right. at here? Oh, this Based is true story. this is my Loomis Kung Fu clone, and uh, this is my Clarowin clone. Here's uh, seedling, my yoga pants. You got a God's gift bag seed. And another pheno, the my yoga pants seeds. What is yoga pants, and why is it called that? Uh it's one of the strains I made, and I got that name on Instagram. I was showing off my solid stem plants, how I could, I could take my branch bender right back to the stock. And uh, one of the other growers commented, he's like, "Damn, throw some yoga pants on that bitch." So that's how I got his name. I like that. What's the, uh, did you say the cross? Um, it's all mixed up, really. It's like poly hybrid that I've got a couple of generations of breeding into. Mostly, uh, NL5, a little bit of, uh, AK and Maui in it. It reminds me of if you ever seen Caramelicious, the yeah. strain Caramelicious. That's what it reminds me of. You work with a lot of the uh, what I'd call old old school stuff. Uh, a lot of the stuff that I yeah, really like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't switched it up in years. I haven't introduced anything new or got any uh, seeds or clones. You're probably better off for it in a lot of cases. Yeah. Honestly, that'll make you stand apart from a lot of the crowd, which is now just yeah. you were talking it's about poly hybrids, but there's not a lot of poly hybrids with NL and, and AK. It's now you know cookies and cakes. You right. know? That's so what you, this is. You're in a different ball game. This is this is the AK male to a NL5 female, and uh, this is uh, my F3 here. This is my little IPM patch. Got a bunch of different stuff in there: carrots, uh, alyssum, dill. Got some uh, lemon balm, sage, rosemary. Bunch of bunch of garden plants started inside. These are all my bathroom grow. I just actually brought them outside and transplanted them. These were uh, these were two plants per pot, and these little these little things here growing under light packed over the the tub. I'm not I lost my. Yeah, that's what I got going. Are they going to all end up in big containers like that one on the end? or I'm not sure. I'm thinking about cloning them and flowering them out just to have some fresh buds. I was just playing around in the bathroom in the winter. Bored. Uh, okay. Of course, keeping this, keeping my clone alive and popping seeds in the dirt. Yeah, I'm going to run across this in a, in a bag. Pop that in the dirt. Pretty equatorial looking plant. Have you messed around with any of the more modern stuff and and dislike it, and that's why you're hanging on to the old stuff, or you just you know got this back when, and you're just kind of going with what worked? Yep, yep. Um, trying to breed something for the area. Yeah, something that isn't your uh, uh, fruity midsy stuff that everyone else has, and all the dispensaries are full of. There's a lot of that. That's for sure. Yeah, I actually, uh, 
the the weed I like doesn't grow here. I'd have to take it inside or import it. Tiva guy. Yep. Man, there's so I just yeah, I'd lean as heavy as I can towards the plant that'll finish here on time, but it, it doesn't really. Are you, <laughs> doesn't are really you far up it. north, or is it a rain thing? Yeah, I'm right in right in the center of Michigan. Oh yeah, that's tough. Yeah, I'm actually in uh, I'm actually in Charlevoix right now, but at a different place. But you guys get cold, cold and wet, which is a bad combination late season. Makes it a lot harder. Yeah. Oh yeah, hundred percent humidity, harvest time, and like it'll fucking snow if you're not careful. <laughs> like fucking early, yeah. like late October. I, I remember a few times in Ohio where we had snow on um, Halloween, so it can hit you quicker than you expect. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess you got somebody else wanting to come out here. We don't right now. We're just kind of chilling. I, don't, I haven't seen too many questions, but I also have not been looking at the chat. So if you have uh, dropped some questions, I apologize. But I haven't been seeing too many uh, things light up. Mostly just cheers. Everyone saying hello, coming into the show, saying yeah. hi. They're asking I about uh, it, so. a password earlier. Did you have to enter a code to come in? Because I entered. I that did. Code. Yep. Oh, okay. uh, Smart Poker, give it to me in the chat. Smart Poker, you're a great person. You're yeah. an awesome moderator. Earn that wrench every single week. He's always. Him and Crispy Wannabe are amazing. Dropping yep. links when we have guests on, letting people know where they can find them on Instagram or Grow Diaries or, you know, uh, Cocoa for Cannabis and things like that. So always great to have them. And uh, Smile Poker, oh, yeah. if you want to, you can jump on in, even though uh, then the chat will become uh, lawless land. Now we've got other <laughs> mods in there as well doing good good stuff. And probably some people that could get some wrenches. Uh, cheers to Abolish, Sacred Terra, XYZ Vector, another great long time listener we've had them on a few times APM lots of hearts from crispy wannabe right now make sure to check out the uh, Sundays and confused that was on earlier if you didn't see it live check out the uh, recording on smart poker's YouTube channel crispy and smart do some really amazing work over there awesome people great content that was cool about hearing about him uh, keeping it going in his uh, bathroom in the winter I started with a econo wing in my shower with a little 400 watt ballast and a uh, humidity dome with some uh, clones on the counter. And then as soon as it, while that was doing it, I turned my closet into a, with a 600 watt with a little four inch exhaust. And that's how I got started in 2010. So that's a trip down memory lane and just shows you cheap home grow, baby. You can do it every, yeah. you know? And uh, I, I, my first, it took me, you know, like four, three and a half, four months, but my first harvest off of like eight plants and like twos, I got like over a pound and at the time weed was like 200 ounce and, and it was good too. So it was like, that's awesome. And that it got the, that lit the fire under me and I've been doing it for 14 years now. So you can start anywhere. You can keep anything going. If there's a will, there's a way, man. Yeah. Yeah. I took tongue and groove. Uh, boards and made a platform over the cover of the hole in the tub. Uh, yeah, I told my wife, yeah, you're gonna have to, uh, you're gonna have to take a shower for the next few months in the uh, in the main bathroom. I'm taking over the the bathroom in the main and the master bedroom. That's how that started. <laughs> and and I'm taking your closet. <laughs> yeah, I took a bath. The closet and. I don't remember the last time I used the closet in my room, even if I had other rooms. Yeah, I took a couple baths with my plants. I left the drain end of the tub open enough to slide in. You couldn't use the shower, but... Yeah. I have not done that. That's awesome. Yeah. Talk about ambiance right there, man. That's a romantic little setting with your plants. Oh, yeah. Something to add to the bucket list. <laughs> get get their uh, RH, get that VPD right, you know. Get them nice and steamy. Right. Yeah. Maybe vegging like a motherfucker in there. Yeah. Yeah, they did pretty good in them little containers. I started these in the middle of February. And, you know, sharing them pots, I think they did pretty good. But I had them under uh, 650 watt metal halide, too. So, well, it's a thousand water, but I had it turned down. I was gonna say six fifty. That's an odd one. I've heard six hundred yeah. and a thousand, but six so yeah, a thousand, a thousand watt. Down. But yeah, you can run it on six fifty, seven fifty, a thousand, and then it's got a super lumen. 
I don't know what that means, but it's like eleven fifty, I think. Yeah, that's what somebody else. Me and <laughs> me and this other guy figured that because his uh, HPS is eleven fifty. So I figure out oh, that might might be what my super lumens means. Yeah, I think that's full crank on what is typically called a Fowey. Is if you just max it out, they do like one thousand one hundred fifty, I think, ish. Um, yeah. They'll crank though. They still do the job. I think Noah the Grow is rocking a couple of them still. Yeah, it does good. I did all these plants plus uh, I've got three three flats of vegetable plants and a bunch of small containers and a tray of echinacea and a bunch of shit going. What um, veggies are you growing? Uh, right now I just have my peppers and my tomatoes for my salsa started. And I have some loofah gourd started. I just started some giant pumpkins yesterday. And then you I got spicy pepper, or uh, just like the uh... jalapenos. Okay. And and uh, a few cayenne. I did three quarters of a flat of jalapeno, and then the other four trays cayenne peppers. But yeah, I'll be growing a bunch more. But running out of room i gotta set up another room the bathroom's getting too small it's easy to uh outsize your grill i've uh been pretty good lady greenstock gave me one of the hall closets and then i took over a few of the kitchen cabinets <laughs> and uh mm -hmm. right now i'm being a bad grower and, and don't have anything going i did just uh be a good grower and paid my taxes so I filed them at least. We'll see if the government accepts what I uh, came up with, but we'll see. Yeah. Uh, I think we have somebody joining, but it might be with their government name. And it said, I, I think it was Sacred Terra, but they're joining with a name that looks just like a regular name. But well, That's oh, what I did my first time. They yeah. jumped out. I think they're going to jump back in, hopefully. Um, if that was you, Sacred Terra, we I will accept you. I just didn't want you to have your regular name. It's not like a full name; it's just like a, a first name. But I don't want everybody to technically. If you're like, "Hey, I'm Sacred Terra," and then on the bottom it says your first name, I don't want to make you feel like you're uh, not comfortable with anything like that. So we got this Noah some... the Groa here showing off yeah. some garden time too. Yeah, this is just some regular garden stuff uh, for our, starting for our garden outside this year. And I uh, got my wife a little uh, two by four uh, grow tent for starting stuff inside, and then a little uh, four light, four foot T five bulb to put in there. And she starts from seed, and then right now she's harden them off. And then here in the next couple of weeks, we'll plant them in the garden. Nice. Yeah. That's Good stuff I love there, garden. Noah. Good stuff. What up? We got Dog Doctor joining. We got Sacred Garden or Sacred Terra. Cheers, y'all. How y'all doing? I'm doing well. Hey, uh, thank you for having me. Uh, it's been a while. I know I've been talking about lots of things for many, for a long, lot, lot of time. And uh, I'm actually here now, though, so... I got my new babies on the way. Hey, good stuff, man. Happy to see the garden going. I need to get that myself, you know? You know? I got my... This is my uh, hand-autographed poster from Eagle. Amazing awesome. shit. This is, is my... TGA, that's legendary. Yeah, this is my... on the wall, Tao. It's a sticker from Tao, both of them. I know I've been talking to you guys for a long time. I've been talking lots of shit in your chats. You guys think I'm something else, but uh, I'm working on my ways. I'm learning how to communicate with you more properly. I'm trying to be more simple-minded, more kind. But uh, things are getting serious now. Like we We need to teach people how to learn to trust their immune system, how to enhance their immune system, how to use the ensemble effect with all the cannabinoids, all the terpenes, all the herbs that we've become accustomed to. And that's what I'm here for. I'm in school right now. I used to get paid to go to school. Like I'm a retired military veteran. 
I've been through a lot of things. It doesn't even matter. I was getting paid to go to school. I started having seizures from learning their procedures. I was going to school, getting programmed every day, and it made me sick. I literally could not log into my computer without my dog sitting on my lap or I would have a seizure. Then I learned what was going on. Now I'm paying for school. I'm going to school. I'm learning how to do proper herbalism. That's what we need to learn. We need to forget about any approved system any corporation who doesn't have any interest for your immune system that's when we need to learn how to fuck forgive me for cussing but how to hey no no worries man you can say whatever you want we've always had you on here and we've always let you speak your mind sacred you know we we, we keep it real here bro we we try to it's it's not always an open panel show but we've i feel like we've had you on plenty of times in the past and you've showed us some good books and uh told us about some cool information and you put people on to some stuff. So we appreciate you, uh, your service and, and the stuff you're doing right now, just coming on and being real. Health is wealth. A lot of people don't realize how important it is to take care of your body and uh, take care of your mind and, and make sure you're aware of what you're putting in there. And sometimes a free education is not the best one if it's not the best stuff, you know, stuff you can find yourself might be better, especially sometimes you might have to pay for it. But we got dog doctor in the house. He looks like he's ready to show off some garden as well. I don't mean to change the topic too much, but I saw him unzip over there. I heard it unzip. So <laughs> you the heard it. And, uh, I appreciate you both, man. I appreciate the whole community, man. Jack, just one more thing. Don't, don't want to take any more time, but the one time I missed the first episode that I missed, I dreamed about you guys and you guys were yelling at me for missing the episode. So I'm here. Man, we appreciate good to it, man. See you, boys. Always good to have you, man. And uh, don't feel uh, like you have an obligation. We'll, we'll be here on the recording. So if you I'll miss us live, you, we'll be there. And we'll be here next I'll week, too. All right. I'm going to sign out. I'm just going to listen. All right. All right, man. Peace and love. Thanks for stopping by. God and bless I'm, you. I'm, well I'm, too, I'm here for some of that stuff he was talking about, too. I just want to say that. Hey, and you seem like you're doing well, man. It's always good to see. Yeah, All right. I'll, be, I'll, mute myself. I'll mute myself. How about that? Yeah, man. Feel free <laughs> yeah, to hang out. How do I do that? Uh, I think it's just on the bottom. If you tap the screen, there will be like a little icon. Like, on the bottom left side, yeah. This is what you found it. You got it, buddy. Cheers. Now I'm going to spotlight Dog Doctor so we can check out his garden over here. Looking good, Dog Doctor. What do we got? No, it's not. It's not looking good, but thank you. <laughs> this, this it's a little, you know, uh, more yellowish green than it yeah. could be, but, you know, you're not too far off. This uh, is rescuable. I'm, or I'm correcting turn it, actually. I'm uh, correcting. This This uh, run is coming before Spanabis, and I went Spanabis. They were left alone just on water. They softer a lot, but then time was coming out, and I had to flip them, so I flipped them. They were still not where I liked them, so I'm still dealing. The color is coming back slowly on all of them, but they're clearly angry, and uh, they're clearly not okay. But buds are forming. So let's see how this is going. I'm actually doing a, a show on these girls on YouTube. I just started. So whatever happens with them, we will see there. This is an Anesia run. We have a future one over here. Apricot Aureus. This one. Zomias and uh, red red banana, yes, red banana pudding. I've been dealing with some gnats, and I need to order some nematodes. Not too too bad, but still way too much more numbers that I would like and appreciate. Somebody I'll say this. For having gone to Spanibus, I think it was worth the experience for you to get to go to Spanibus. I'm sure you had a good time, and the plants are not like dead you know they're still alive and you still have a, a crop on the way oh yeah i'd rather have a slightly stressed out crop than no crop at all for sure agreed agreed for good or for bad we are here and we're loving these girls as they have as if they were perfect queens already whatever for me they are still anyway hey doc sir did you turn the fan off in there or there is none oh there's a fan there ah okay the, I have the air going like this. I bet For you when we close the tent, the leaves will start to flutter because oh, yeah, yeah, feeling yeah, yeah. that third wall. Right, right. 
now they're not moving because the, everything is open so the air is coming out but uh, once I close the door this is making a, a cyclope no a vortex vortex yes and uh, every leaf is moving I will also put another one up here because now it's getting full but for now you see this is moving right right I just didn't see it yep you see just from the airflow I'm doing nothing look yeah, no, it's good. There's, there's, I feel that for now it's enough, but I will probably need to supplement some more. This thing keeps rocking the place. So does the trauma master controlling it. It really works very well, both of them together. Everything is being fed on Aptus. And what I'm doing to correct or to help them correct is, sorry about the mess, I'm uh, remodeling all the space. I'm using Nutri Spray, which is a foliar. And it's really helping them coming back. I did uh, two applies for now. I'm about to do the third one tomorrow or so. Yeah, just then keep hitting get... them with it, man. When they are a little light like that, I did the exact same thing when I went on vacation. My plant sitter gave them water, 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 and I had the nutrients pre measured out and everything. But they basically flushed in cocoa, and I came back, and my plants were like, Kelly green when I left and they were bright yellow when I came home <laughs> and I just fully, I gave them a regular, maybe a little bit heavier than normal feed and then fully aired them like two, three times a day for like the first week. And within a couple of days they were back to looking basically hundred percent. It's amazing how much they can actually bounce back with a foliar like that. It's amazing. And this thing uh, stays on the leaves for two weeks. So whatever she doesn't absorb at the moment, it will stay there creating a protective layer also. And we'll be absorbed later on. So let's see how they go. I'm pretty sure I'm going to have something to smoke from here. That's for sure. I know you will, for sure. <laughs> and talking about smoking, this one's been here for 36 hours now, dark. Today, actually, I'm about to open. This is um, Art Genetics PCRs. Let me, I don't know if I can show this like this, but. Well, that's looking real nice. Frosty there purple nuts. Go. Let me find the lights. Is this more than one strain or is it all the same strain? No, all the same, but three different uh, cultivars. They came out differently. Very similar. Three Sinos or cultivars? Uh, Finos, sorry, 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 sorry. Three different Finos. All of them super frosty. Looking like a lot of the modern stuff you see here on the West Coast today. Oh, she's definitely not old school, this one. I'm curious to see where, this, where she goes, but I'm really, really happy with her, actually. She also was left alone, but... Uh, she didn't care that she was just on water for part of this. Is this your first time running this one? Have you smoked it yet? No, not at all. My first time running the both the genetics and and the, the breeders. Looks like you'll have some uh, nice stuff to smoke on there. Oh, I hope so. Let's see. I will keep you guys posted on her. It looks like uh, some of the stuff Noah the Egroa grows as well, I'd say. Uh, Purple and super frosty. Very, very sticky also. No, you have purple. some that finish green as well. I feel like a lot of your stuff is purple, but maybe you've got a few that go green at the end. Me? Yeah, and you're stable. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm uh I'm getting I'm in my room right now. I'm just messing around. I'll I'll go in here for a few minutes. Yeah, no. Um uh, the greenest one that I have that finishes would be uh, GG4, as I'm looking. And then I got stuff that finishes, like, kind of green, kind of. It just depends on the temps and different things like that. Like, uh, yeah, I'm finishing a GG4 right now. You can definitely see the difference. The T1000 gets, like, purple, like, in the tips. But, like, literally when you, when you trim it, like, there'll be some, like, kind of purple, like, accents and stuff. But then I got this... Uh, Lemon cherry gelato plant. 
I, I don't have any more clones of it. And of course it turned out a lot better than last time, but you know, it is what it is. But uh, yeah, no, I, the greenest one that I have right now would be uh GG Forge. Legendary strain for sure. And a legendary person has joined us. We got Cheddar Bob in the house who also grows some uh, like legendary shit like cherry pie and some other really cool stuff. What are you growing and smoking on over there? Cheddar Bob. Oh, Hey everyone. How's it going? Hey Let's buddy. I usually I catch you guys uh just before I get going to bed. So you're a nice uh you <laughs> it's it's nice to be on. <laughs> uh what do I have growing? Well yeah, uh Noah was talking about GG4 and that's what I I've got a little bit of GG4 cross with some uh mudbone, uh which is like a Bubba Bubba Kush cross from Tony over there at uh Boneyard Seeds. But um it's just one plant here it's coming out pretty nice getting pretty frosty i'm finishing week eight today so uh, she's a big bunch yeah yeah she's pretty big you know and it it with the cross it's got that i knew it was a gg4 cross the second the structure came out you can tell just from the the side leaning friggin branches you know like it's pretty indicative of of gorilla glue four, so and then uh mother. I got go ahead. No, no, mother genetics. Go, 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 go. Oh yeah. Yeah. So and then uh over here, this is actually one I made last uh well I didn't I can't even say I made it. It was a clone sent to me by Tony, a breeder clone, but I guess it was mislabeled or something. It was supposed to be cherry, uh not cherry, uh strawberry cough. But from my ex or from my explanation about how it grew and how it smelled, Tony said, "No, definitely not strawberry cough." So, it is now a mystery clone. And my buddy Justin Cooney came over with a male and put it in between all these breeder clones. And uh, yeah, so these are some of the seeds what was that, that came male? out of it. Uh, the male he calls it Bombaloni, which is. Hmm. Uh, Tony's one hitter quitter crossed with a couple different like blueberry oh, things. One. I want to say like what is, what is the humble seed one? Is that blueberry muffin? Muffin, muffin. blueberry yeah. muffin. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think it had blueberry muffin in it. And but I mean, these things came out sick. Cheddar. So yes, that one hitter quitter. Like I've heard about it. Yeah. Is it real? Yeah, it's real. It's the real I want to I, I try it. Like, I've been smoking weed since I was nine years old. Yeah, that, really one, to... that one checks all the boxes. I mean, only if you like, like, permanent marker, new smelling shoes, and, like, really hot I, I like racing. All, <laughs> all, the above. all the above. Yeah, uh, it's totally chemi and, like, and it's potent. It's, it's, uh, it's medicine. It's not, like... Yeah, it doesn't that's... get you high, it gets you stoned. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like there's a there's yes. definitely a, a, a difference with that. That's so, old yeah, school that... and like the chemi strains and that smell that you're describing, like the almost um I it's like acrid, but at the same time it's like specifically like chemi. Like there's a chemical like not the permanent yeah. markers strain. Uh, there's a strain called permanent markers, but that to me smells a little bit like it's those benzene modern. rings or something, I feel like like those aromatics that are like super common, you know. Yeah. 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 This I mean this, this smells this smells like someone took a permanent marker, colored the inside sole of a brand new set of sneakers and then set them on top of some some hot racing tires. That's funny. Like like but those smokes, the smells are like smokes, all right there. And it smokes the same way? Well, uh, you mean like the flavor the translates. Smell the smell. It, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, like yeah. Yeah. Sounds, yeah. yeah. It yeah, smokes yeah, like flavor it totally, smells like, and it sounds totally like. Translate. Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. It knocks you out. Like it's, yeah. it's, it's narcotic. It's, it's. Who's potent, it from? But, Who's the one hitter? It's, it it's from. It's from. Yeah, from Tony from Boneyard Seeds, and he yeah. just. I think he just did a reversal on it too. So, so I S1s? think he's got those. Yeah, Bro. he's got some S ones. I've been hearing him talking about it. He he always talks about all his genetics and this and that and he's got lineage and knowledge for days and then he's like oh, yeah. but if you want that one strain it's called one hit or quitter and i've heard him talk about it for the past like almost four or five years 
and like i'm about to just buy a pack of it because i, I want to yeah, hear you, you definitely should I, I mean i've got i've got like 52 packs of his gear all different <laughs> all different <laughs> cultivars you know Where's the like, shot man shit if you're if you're ever that curious about a strain i implore anybody if they're oh. capable grow it out fucking get a yeah. pack grow it out see for yourself you'll hear hype yep. you'll hear hype but when you grow it for yourself you'll know for sure oh damn this lives up to it or uh eh, it's just another you know that's it's okay good. that's awesome yeah. though because like no life changing I'm, i come from an opiate addiction i come from all kinds of stupid things so like I use cannabis to combat my problems. You know what I mean? And it's like sometimes a fucking dispensary weed doesn't cut it. You know what I mean? I need some real cannabis that will treat my ailment. Right. And it sounds like, yeah, you're do right. You, do OGs and chems ever do it for you? Like if you got a good OG Kush or like a chem dog or derivatives? That's how I started with the Afghan Kush, the Hindu Kush. Uh, I started with mandala seeds. Actually, I got the, uh what did i get i got safari mix and then mandala damn hashberry i started with hashberry hate ashberry mandala old old school strains then i got to uh sensi afghan kush yeah the afghans and the hindus man that's what makes me feel like a human good stuff for sure definitely yeah. uh people going through anything with like past opiate use heavier ogs chems i really like the donnie burger in modern times or some of the good gmo like bat crosses into ogs uh Don donnie burger is like a larry og f8 cross to basically gmo twice it was gmo cross to larry og f8 and then they crossed that to gmo again and um all of the phenotypes i've had of it have been spectacular so if you haven't tried the donnie burger uh, I might even have some seeds I could hook you up with, Sacred. So if you shoot me an address, I might throw you a couple Donnie Burger seeds to check out because that's a one that I know. Like I've tried it and I've heard a lot of hype about it, but I like that's one that every single person I've gotten to talk to who has had the chance to try it, they're like, oh yeah, it is actually fucking nine or ten out of ten. Like it's fucking really knocky on the dirt, kind of like heavy stone, uh, lots of flavor and potency. Don't need to smoke a ton of it. Not necessarily one hit or quitter, but like. You know one bowl is going to get you there and two bowls is going to probably put you to sleep that's hey that's what i need hey that sounds great also uh i working on my strain it's called uh urkel fighter i took purple urkel from pyramid and i crossed it to masonics uh street fighter which is a starfighter it's a it's a wilson starfighter back cross so i made urkel fighter I'll send you some of my seeds because I know you're working on 50 strains of purple and it would be my honor if you could just accept my seeds that are worthy. I don't, I, you could call me number 50. You know what I mean? I'll check them out. Shit. I'll grow them out. Yep. We'll link up in the, the I don't DM. think you rank them, right, I, Jack? They're, no, they're, they're rank. They're they're ranked in the sense that they're the top fifty of I've tried over a thousand. Right? Oh, so the number one is the one you like the most. I didn't well, realize. That no, no, no. It's it's just like oh, it wasn't it's ranked. In no okay. particular right. order. It's that it's just that they're you. they're fifty that are notable of being included because I've tried so many. Oh, okay. If they if they're number one or they're number fifty, they're on the top fifty list at an equal level. I see. The order this time around is more going to be. I'm actually going to have to reorder it from what I initially just thought of, like, what are my 50 favorite purple strains? And then I was like, eh, these are actually just okay. Those need to get cut and replaced with better shit. And so that happened with a couple. And now I'm like, well, it would make sense from a reader's perspective if I'm going to talk about Donnie Burger to talk about GMO first so that they know what GMO is when they're learning about Donnie Burger, if they're both going to be included. And like Girl Scout cookies to include that before some of the derivatives that come later on, like a, a Sherb or something like that, uh, gelato, things like that. Jack, Which, did you ever grow any of that burgers and beer from the ranch? The Donnie Burger crossed with, I think it was the root beer. I haven't. Have not, no. I haven't grown anything root beer, to be honest. Um, It was one that, that Terp profile wasn't something I was seeking. So I've heard a lot of good things about it. It's just, I haven't gotten to try it and haven't grown it myself. So, yeah. yeah. But I do hear a lot of good shit, I, even though I, I do like like actual root beer and there's some of like that sassafrasy, like interesting, uh, whatever the hell or not sassafras, what the fuck is in root beer that makes it smell. There's like sarsaparilla. Sarsaparilla. Hey, Jack. Sarsaparilla. 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 Sarsaparilla.
Jack, I'm gonna uh DM you because I make salves and tinctures and people call my tinctures not tinctures because I use olive oil and they say tinctures are supposed to be made, supposed to be made with alcohol, but I have both kinds, but regardless, I make salves and tinctures. I'm gonna send you some of my products, but Yes, thank you. And I, I would love to have you have the purple punch. What is it called? The purple jack too? I'm I'm sorry, I forget. What is your strain called? It's a uh, I'm working with a guy called Doja DNA and we have Velvet Punch, which is a purple punch cross with like a kind of poly hybrid. Purple punch. See, I have Doge, I have a Gelato 33S1 times jo times do times purple doge. Is that what you're is that the same thing? A little different, but they're uh, a lot of the purple stuff gets confusing. Bro, I have you... all the purple. I have all the purples. I have grape ape, purple Urkel from I have Mendocino purple. I have pyramid purple. I have I have I have I have even uh 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 blueberry blueberry DJ short blueberry. I have Afghan Kush. I have so many different variations of the parents because I went into the vaults and bought them. It took me three years to find these. Every day I was searching for them and I finally found them and I bought them all at once. And I got like breeder packs. So we need to collaborate for real. Yeah, man, I got shit tons of uh, purple. And I think the Velvet Punch is unique because the guy I'm working with, um, his name it, is Doja DNA. He goes, his actual name is Dan. Oh, I have buddy. that pack right here. All right, Jack, I'm going to take off. I got to get going. Oh, yeah, shit. Uh, it's the hour. I missed that. Tao, thank you so much for having no us. Worries. I just wanted to say goodbye. And uh, yeah, everybody knows where you can find me. And it was great to I be doubt. here, and we'll catch you. At, we'll catch you guys next week or in between. Have a great one. But thanks. I have all the grapes. I have all the blues. <laughs> like AmyAces.com. Get yourself some Amy Aces. Dallas fucking. <laughs> I love man. you guys, man. You guys keep me sane. I love you guys. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. God bless you. Have a blessed week. All the above. We're here for one more hour, actually. But Tao is just jumping out because uh, he oh, can only shit, stay. My bad. All right. I'll gotta right here, I gotta go. Pee. I gotta go. Pee. <laughs> I'm gonna. <laughs> you can mute and then uh go hit the head or if you want to jump out whatever you're feeling we're always welcome to have the people but yeah it's cool lots of different purples out there the uh velvet punch is just one of many but i think it's a little bit different for a variety of reasons it's uh i took it to f3 and selected i definitely wanted it to be purple so it's a good thing that like 90 plus percent of the people are getting all purple phenos and things like that so it's a smoke that when i smell it it made me like I'm not really a religious person, but it makes me say, oh, my God, because the fucking smell is so almost intoxicating. It's a very lovely aroma, a whole bunch of different stuff. But the cross for anybody who hasn't heard is uh, it's from Doja DNA. Originally, the F1 was Purple Punch was a female. Um, that's Larry OG crossed the Granddaddy Purple, and he crossed that to his Cookie 7, which uh, Cookie 7 is an original creation by Doja DNA, which is a cross of Thin Mint Girl Scout Cookie. Uh, black Velvet Kush, which is Mexican Sativa and Chem 4. And all that was crossed to OG Kush. And basically that was the male that was used. So Cookie 7 is the male that knocked up Purple Punch to make the F1. I grew those out and I was like, wow, this is really good shit. And I was like, I'm going to make more. So I made F2s and sent those out to 100 plus growers, 80 something, grew them out. Uh, did some testing on the F3s with some of those people who did a good job and uh, we're interested in continuing to test them. And so, yeah, the F3s are pretty stable. I'd say they're very uh, phenotypically, you, you get basically one of two uh, chemotypes and one of four uh, structural expressions. But yeah, it's a variety that I've definitely enjoyed working with. And the dude, Dan, is a great guy. So I'm happy to be able to kick back a percentage of the sales uh, back to him. Because I like to, uh, you know, stand on the shoulders of giants. He worked a decade in his greenhouse. Mm -hmm. He never kept a cut. So the reason that his cross is so kind of crazy, like this strain to that strain to that strain, it's so polyhybrid, is each season he would take his best thing and then cross it to some of his other best stuff. And then the next season he'd do the same thing over and over and over. So he's got a couple of these strains that have males that have kind of wild offsprings, but they turn out some really killer shit. So I'm uh, really happy to work with this stuff. Cheddar Bob, uh, we were a little bit midway through your garden. Did you have anything else that you wanted to show us plants wise that we didn't uh, get to talk about? Yeah, I mean, I got a couple of things here, you know, going on. Let's see what I can flip around to. There we go. Uh, so that's the uh that's the first bed. Uh and actually this this bed I've 
I started in 2017. So Spid's going on. What is that? It's like seven years old. Roughly seven years. Yeah. So I bet seven years old and this bed's now five years old because I started this one two years later. So, and uh, I mean, things are still just, they're popping off. They're still this producing is... like killer flower. Sorry to interrupt you, Cheddar, but this is my pack of Amy Aces that I got almost two years ago. And like, this is the first strain that I'm ready to be proud to talk about. Like, bro, Kyle sent me a pack of seeds and I want to grow them. You know what I mean? Like, thank you. Did Sorry you, to Did you flower them out? Did you, did you get some flower oh, from Amy Aces? This is the original pack I got. I still got the playing cards. I got his logo right here on my wall you know what i mean like i just been traveling for too long i like i have ptsd i've lost two gardens normally when i start a garden it always finishes but i've lost two gardens in my life and it fucking i'm not ever gonna lose a garden again so i'm hesitant to start a garden but you see what's going on so i'm just letting you know like Right now I'm doing mine. I'm do I doing my own strain that I created, but the next thing I'm doing is this, and then we're gonna go from there. All right. Do you like I cheesy love- weed? Do you like yes. cheesy strains? Then you're gonna yes. like that Amy Aces, man, because it's cheesy as fuck. Yeah, I have well, I don't have seizures anymore, thank God, but I used to have seizures, you know what I mean? So like this'll be you know. Good medicine, man. A yes. lot of people get great medicine, a lot of help. Great medicine. Great medicine. Great stuff. What kind of other great medicine, uh, Cheddar Bob? You were showing us a few of the final strains over there that you got growing. It's looking Sorry, good. Cheddar. Sorry, Cheddar. That's <laughs> all right, man. Don't worry about it. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Uh, so these are a couple more of uh, Tony's gear. Uh, since I have so much of it, I, I just keep running it. And this is a Topanga Canyon cross with something he got from Jodry. Port Port Royal Reserve, I think. I I, I don't want to misspeak, so I just know it's a Topanga Canyon cross. I was just and... driving through Topanga Canyon like a few weeks ago, which is something oh, no I was telling my wife. I was like, <laughs> strain from here. It's 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 good shit. I yeah. swear. Um, and it, also... this stuff stretches so much, Jack. Like, so these I had to rip this whole bed out. I had some plants that were really tall. I didn't sex them. They were regular seeds, and they all ended up being male. I was like, damn. So I had ripped the bed up. I had these ones in veg and they were only in solo cups. Like, I don't know. They didn't even touch the screen. So they were like 15 inches tall. So I put them in the soil and they were, these were already, I had just put these in the flower. So they just went in and look how, I mean, this is 15 inches and that's 15 inches. And then they're probably another 15 inches above that. So that's how much they stretched in flower. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, Topanga and, Canyon is, I think, an OG. And OGs are known yeah. for fucking stretching and stacking. It's got that OG note spacing, too, man. Holy yeah, shit. yeah, man. It's it's crazy. And this one's actually kind of mutant-like. Um, man, this one, this one's like, this one's pretty gnarly. Uh, definitely a little too close to the light. I'm getting a little fox sailing on that top nug, but it is what it is. I didn't know what I was dealing with. I knew they were going to stretch. I didn't know they were going to stretch, like, four times the amount. So, yeah, some OGs will surprise you, man. And I bet you that's yeah. gonna be some good ass smoke though. I, I love yeah, I that kind of OG. And, it, and it's it's gonna I'm go a while too. Like, I'm gonna take this like probably eleven or twelve weeks. So uh um, yeah. you know, it just is what it is. And then uh so those are called uh Bone Meets World. And then these ones here are called Flame On, which is Tony's Raindrops, uh, which is like a kosher OG. Uh, or kosher kush, kosher kosher kush cross, I think, um, with a whole bunch of stuff with his angel, but um, yeah, just not really. Uh, get like a little sandalwood off a couple of them, and more earthy sort of notes. Not a, a little gas behind them, but yeah. So that's what I got going on. Week uh, finishing week eight today. Start week nine tomorrow. Cool stuff, man. It's amazing to see yeah. some of those plants that you can just basically throw in there and the males kind of left you a little bit high and dry and then you just flip and rip and the ladies yeah. are showing out. You're going to get, you know, decent amount of nugs from uh, yeah. those plants. And, there. you know, like I'm not, 
I'm not out here throwing down to dispensaries and stuff like that. Like this is going to last me hopefully until next harvest and boom, we'll go from there. So the, the, the life spirit. of the home grower, you know, are you uh, <laughs> pretty good about getting that veg lined up. So you replace them when they're chopped. Uh, yeah, I, you know, I, I have been in the past. I'm so lackadaisical and like, just kind of like, eh, whatever to my approach that like, uh, it doesn't always line up like right now I have 28 plants in veg right now. And I'm still like, I mean, they're ready to be transplanted, but I still got, you know, two and a half, three weeks left on these. So I got to take some clones and throw them in solo cups and then maybe just do like, take these screens down and do 20 solo cups in each bed and so, or something like that. So that's always fun, man. Yeah, it is because it's green just fucking realistic- over it realistically if you know what you're working with you end up with just about the same amount of weed if not more so it's it's pretty nice it works there's so many ways to yeah fill your jar and and i mean like these like this is the longest i've spent in this room for i don't know probably like six weeks you know since they started flipping um set up with these beds and the blue mats here like i don't have to do anything like down here i have to come and make sure that it's not flooded that my reservoirs have some water in it and and that's it man it's it's freaking easy peasy it's forgiven i yeah i love it i love it so much i i don't think i could i don't think i could grow if i had to be on such a schedule you know yeah i feel i I, 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 I pop seeds every time so it's like I should be on a better schedule, but I'm in the same situation where it's like, I've got a fridge full of weed. It's over. Like I open up my shit and it weeds falling out of there. And and I mean, I, I work, I got a job last year that's not growing weed and working for some big company and like, man, they fucking drive me to the bone. I work like 90 hours a week during harvest. And like, I I don't have time. I don't have time to be here with the plants. So like if, if, if I had to trust an automated chemical schedule, like, no way man. Yeah. some people can I, make I, it work we we had the um xyz vector who has gone 30 days and didn't touch his plants and they're turning out great but i'm not that guy i'm, I'm like you yeah you know, i work a way. lot own a small business grinding yeah. as hard as i can to keep it alive through yeah you know a lot of small businesses a lot of big businesses fucking close so it's like uh i definitely you know bought the good fight as a small business like many do it makes there me you. appreciate all the other ones and all the shit that they go through because like, yeah. everybody has their own different issues. especially the good ones Right. If you're trying to just, yeah. you know, provide a good uh, product or service to your customer at a decent price. And uh, it's harder and harder to do that as uh, shit gets more and more expensive. And, uh, you know, but yep. anyway, I digress. Um, <laughs> cannabis is um, sort of that way. And it, it keeps us away from our plants at times being involved in businesses. And so the more hands off we can be and still have success. I also just like, you know, I have cats and stuff. And so when I was mixing up all the nutrients and things like that, if I accidentally drop or spill something, then I have to like immediately, you know, wipe it up and this and that. I don't know if it's okay to get on my skin. I'm not that technically savvy to necessarily know what I should be worried about and what I shouldn't be worried about. So I probably fucking right. over worry rather than under worry because I'm better safe than sorry. But I know, you know, if I was a little lazy that day, maybe I've got a fucking skin burn or something, you know, it's like, <laughs> I don't want any of that shit or my cat right. lapping up a little pool of, you know, phosphate or some shit. You know, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> So a great way to transition to transition some, some, this thought would be to remind you all to smile at the sun. You go outside, you smile at the sun. It reminds your cheeks that these muscles that are uh, uh, flexing remind your brain to release serotonin because it's a like you're smiling. So smile, stare at the sun, squint your eyes. Point your teeth towards the sun so you're getting uh immune system boost teeth whitening and natural happiness not and a, a slightly burned retina <laughs> no, well, I'm, I'm, I'm not telling you to stare at the sun i'm telling you to squint your eyes so sun when gazing. you when you see the refractions of the light you see that rainbow okay and then what did i write hold on and I'm praying right, while you're him. in the middle of that, I gotta go, guys. I gotta, yes, I gotta I'm go here. take care of my kid. Peace and love, Cheddar Bob, everyone. Dog Doctor. Great to see you all. 
Sorry to jump out. I have, I have two hours. Hey, so no sorry. worries, man. Thanks for showing off the garden. You don't have to have stay a, the whole time. Have a great no, night. Yeah, Open panel means you can come and go as you please. Oh, Cheers, y'all. Thank you, brother. Really appreciate you guys. Been really Thanks, been love. thinking about you all winter, bro. So you could find uh, him at Cheddar Bob thirteen, and you could find Dog Doctor at Dog Doctor Official. Cheers, Dog. And Doctor. now you can find me on YouTube. I started the YouTube channel. This is new. Hey, go subscribe. Okay. Oh. Only have three, three, four episodes. Out. No, actually, three. The fourth one is ready to go out. So, if you're curious, please feel free to come out. If you like, subscribe, comment, be happy. If not, all good. Also, the same. <laughs> Being happy is a good thing. I got my happy cat right here. This is Tallulah. She's my co-host. She's beautiful, buddy. She's really beautiful. You hear that? Prayer, anyway, so I must be doing something. Right. Love. Much thanks to Up to Straw Master, to Future of Grow, and to you guys, and to everybody. I'm Doc Doctor. Thank you, guys. Girls love. Keep on growing as part and say. Absolutely. Cheers, Doctor. Thank you. Growing. Have a good right. one. Thank you for. Thank you. I got to live up to that expectation. I need to pop some seeds. And now that I finished my taxes, like it was talking about being a small business owner and you know stuff that you have to go through, filing taxes on time and uh, making sure that you don't get yourself in trouble with the good old government. But uh, that was definitely a time of the year that takes some of the extra attention that you don't need the rest of the year. So um, now I've got a little bit more time to sit down and uh, go set up the veg, get my garden all ready. I basically just need to move a few pots, scrub a few things down, and uh, get my shit together, you know? I got some really good seeds from Spartan Grown that I'm really excited to grow. I'm uh, certainly looking forward to... <laughs> it's just, why are you sneezing? XYZ Vector, I was just leaning back because my cat came and jumped on my lap. But... Uh, just relaxed, man. Smoking on that good herb. Relaxed, as I should be, in my home on a Sunday evening, just hanging with some good homies. I love these I shows where we get to hang out with the people from the chat, get people to come on, show off their garden, just chit-chat, talk, smoke, chill, hang out, and uh, talk about... We were talking a lot about genetics tonight, which is one of my favorite conversations, because I'm always excited to pop on the new things. I know we got Sacred over there about to pop some... Uh, he just popped his own stuff, but he's got some Matao stuff coming down the pipe, and I can speak from my own firsthand experience. I really liked the Amy Aces a lot. Um, when I first harvested it, it had more limonene on the early end, where it had some citrus notes, um, which I wasn't necessarily expecting, because he said Tao described it as like a, a new ball and like some other things, but I definitely got that rubber, like a like a handball, like a blue, like a racquetball, or like tennis, fresh rubber. Like when, you, when you open a tennis ball. Yeah, just that kind of fresh manufactured rubber smell. And that was definitely mixed in there with cheese, but the cheese just became more and more apparent. And that was the thing that just dominated throughout the cure. And it ultimately the citrus kind of faded away almost entirely where like you could barely taste it on the palate, like almost not present at all. Uh, the rubber was there, but it was certainly overshadowed by the cheese and to the point where like a lot of people were like, oh, this is just cheese. I could just smell just like pure fucking cheese. I couldn't necessarily put my finger. I like a few different cheeses, but it wasn't like cheddar. It was like some other cheese, but uh, there's so many different cheeses out there. It wasn't like blue cheese, uh, not quite that funky, but yeah, it was certainly uh, not as like sharp as a Swiss. <laughs> but well, yeah. you know, I was talking to somebody about this. At, I actually also had a jaunt at the Emerald Conference that came and went uh, recently. Got to meet a couple of people like Jason Wilson, Kyle Boyar, and some others. But, um, you know, I was talking with some people who said that, like, maybe some of the waxes in uh, the flower or on like that, that compose like a uh, like cutin or or in the trichomes, for example. Like they can bind with some of our receptors sometimes. And there's waxes and cheeses, too, which might be why we attribute like a cheesy profile sometimes. They bind with their receptors in kind of a weird, uh, fuzzy way. That's not the technical terminology, of course, but um, it can give like a weird, like quasi, like you know, not a not quite a flavor, but almost like a mouthfeel kind of thing. There's like a physical chemistry thing going on there, and um, I would just wonder if that might be what's going on with some of these uh, plants. If it's not like a uh, a different kind of compound, maybe that is the kind of compound. Um, just some food for thought. It's so oh, interesting. Makes... Sometimes there's literally this shared compounds, like with the grape 
artificially flavored kind of scent. That's actually just, you know, methyl anthranolate, the ester, which won't show up on a terpene test. But um, in the cheese case, like I think there might be esters, there might also be aldehydes, ketones and other things within there that are actually shared There's among a lot of cheese. acids and ketones and things for sure in cheeses. Yeah. And, 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 um, yeah. And like, like you were saying, like, for example, I'm a, I don't know, I don't know what chat's going to think about this, but I'm a blue cheese fan. I like blue cheese, but not any kind of blue cheese. And some blue cheese kind of sucks. Also, if it gets too moist or something happens, like that's really gross to me too. So like, it has to be like kept well, like in a, in a refrigeration or whatever. But, So like, um, do you like a blue cheese sauce that you would like dip a wing in or just like a blue cheese, like the actual hard blue cheese, like crumble? Some of the sauces that are made that that are called blue cheese are really terrible, but there are some good ones out there. But to be honest, like I'll definitely eat like a um like uh <laughs> a name is not coming to my uh, head, like a Roquefort, although I'm not really a fan. The the really, really, really smelly, I guess that's subjective, but like the really intensely odorous ones that people like tend to like find really bad or almost putrid i'm not like a fan but like i want my blue cheese to be somewhat i like the crumbly crumblier side for sure So um a little and funky. i and i want a lot of that blue those like blue strands of like the uh the uh, colonization because if it's just the white stuff like i could just get another cheese there are other cheeses that have that profile it's that it is that like The blue is what makes that it special. exactly it's that it's that um that tinginess right like and My sometimes wife loves it. yeah really yeah Obsessed with it. I'm a blue cheese. Like I, I like probably some of the sauces that you probably think are disgusting. <laughs> but I well also some probably of them like some like of the ones if they're you would really like. well done they're great but a lot of them are just like they're just not like blue cheese really but some Yeah. but they do have a twang maybe sometimes My wife do you likes like the twang real, real stuff, like the funky, like you're talking about that has like more twang. We have some in my fridge right now and it's like a tiny little piece like this will stink up an area. You know, it's like Oh it has yeah, a so pungency. that sounds pretty high quality to me, to be honest. Oh, it Like, is. so you Like, don't it's have to the use a whole good bunch. shit. It's not like it's supposed to be like ketchup. No, no, a little bit goes a really long way. You don't want to eat it like a, I don't know, like a cheddar block or even like a, I feel like a soft cheese, which is what I realized is what I felt like the American ones or my fino of Tao's, Amy Ace's was like a feta cheese or like a brie, not quite as rich as a, a brie, but not as like a passive as a mozzarella if we're talking about soft cheeses. Um, so that might be some references for people that they might be more familiar with if they're looking for a cheesy strain because cheese varies a fucking lot if people are like oh it just smells like A cheese lot. there's such a variety like sharp cheddars They're so are different like that they're, it's almost like you wouldn't even call them the same thing in some cases. Like, it's purely because of the process, you know, that we call it a cheese. Otherwise, like, yeah, in what world is, like, a really, like, a gorgonzola or, like, a roquefort yeah in any way, peppers shape, or are form, almost like... the same way it's like you could have like the world's like spiciest fucking pepper ever and then you could have something that's like you know mild as shit and then like one that is just like really robust in flavor but doesn't necessarily have much spice profile to it at all and Even And like the I'm sauces. not sure, I think they're different enough because like chili, like capsicum supposedly from South America, so. It is interesting that it's like, in a sense, just like a pain receptor, almost being stoked a little bit there with the hot stuff. But there's certainly more to it. I, I don't know. There's a lot of health benefits. Like I, I came across a guy who he's like a 
hot pepper, like one of, one of the hot pepper eaters. And like, he talks about it, like how people talk about cannabis. Like he's like, it helped me get off blood pressure medications and it did all this I stuff like for that. my health. Yeah. And it like cleared up, you know, first thing it like cleared his sinuses. But then like after that, there was just so much more. It's like there was just great benefits. Like he's not drinking. He's not using drugs. Like he is just like, that's his rush. That's his fucking high is eating some of these hot peppers. And like he's like to the level that like he gets like the hottest peppers in the world and makes tinctures out of them. So they're even like 10 times hotter than. So I'm like, holy shit, this is literally just like cannabis, you know, like the fucking flowers. You know, when they talk about enough. medicine being bitter, you know, I think this is kind of similar right it's like some it's a strong medicine kind of in this way now not everyone necessarily needs to to use this or or it might even not work for some people uh certainly but uh it, or or be a a plausible alternative but yeah there are people out there who i think like they can take like a mega dose of, of, of like capsaicin and like the other similar compounds um associated and i do think that there's some like uh really strong effect i think i've seen some research into this too but i don't recall it so i don't want to misspeak but i do think that like uh kind of like how like the bitter bitterness and medicinal like we think bitter and medicinal we put those together because there's, there's like alkaloids and things that can have various effects and for a lot of organisms they're toxins or if we have too much of it they can be a problem but for other people, we can power through because of our physiology. So but they there used can to be say benefit. yeah. a spoonful of sugar makes the medicine go down. And exactly. it's because a lot of the medicine had a bitter taste to it. It was disgusting. You needed that spoonful of sugar to fucking stomach it or, or you know, palate it. But it was what was necessary. Not to say that a lot of those medicines are necessarily the good stuff. But even back in the day when like cannabis was the uh, drug of choice up to like the 30s, there was tinctures and things like that. And that was one of the more common ways that it was uh, even alcohol or otherwise. Um, I think that it's cool if somebody makes a tincture, even if it's olive oil or some other oil. There's a lot of cannabinoids that are able to be uptaken into there. So it's like, who cares as long as it gets in there, you know, it's all good with me. Different processes. I'm definitely pedantic, though. And I would agree with people who say that a tincture is, is an alcohol based solution. But that's just taxonomy. Like, we know what you mean, man. You're putting you're, you're diffusing compounds and things into a substance. So the other ones are an infused oil. Substance. It's an extract, right? Extract. An oil extract, whatever. Hey, yeah. Matthew, I think, I think you'll appreciate this more than uh, anyone. But uh, so what I was using hot sauce for, not in a medicinal use, just more as a uh, stimulant, because I was overworked and sometimes I'd fall asleep while I was driving and we always kept a bottle of hot sauce in the center console you start to feel asleep take a shot of hot sauce and it'll wake you right up you know what i mean i do i used to hang out with some buddies uh some some co-workers from oaxaca uh eusebio Pino tereso and one time we went to some events we went to get some food and what was great was the mexican place had barbacoa and yes. goat i definitely want some goat um and they asked for it and of course you know they had like a special you know, like uh, if you know what to ask for, you'll get it menu. Um, right. And when we would have the hot, the hot sauce, you know, they would just like drink it. They drink the hot sauce and then they take a bite of the burrito. And other people do this, too, of course. But like um, and I've seen that before. But uh, b between like living in China where spicy food is really common, um, right. and doing pretty good with it and also uh, working with people of like a, a, like a Mexican descent. In California, of course, it's interesting to kind of compare those two where spiciness is like a huge, um, like cultural thing, you know, and also, of course, America, right? Like Texas, um, spicy stuff. And I would even say that a lot of that's mixed into California, too. The South, Louisiana, uh, My father South Carolina. loves hot stuff. He's from Kentucky. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean, a lot of the U.S. We, I would say, at this point in the world, we're like leading the world in in hot peppers in, in terms of like breeding and things like that. From at least what I've on the surface level, I, I've seen a few documentaries and things like that, and a lot of it seems like people from all over the world are coming here to participate in our challenges because, like, it went from I remember I saw this shit before my eyes. <laughs> I'm into genetics, so this fascinates me. It was the habanero was the hottest 
for a long time. It was a orange habanero was like 200,000 Scoville. And then like red habanero was like 500,000. And then but, once they eventually got the like, boot Jalokia and then the ghost pepper. And now there's the Carolina Reapers and like the, you know, those have even gone like 10 X in the last several years. So it's been like a arms race of the Scoville, you know, the guy, his name was Johnny Scoville, I think was uh, the individual that I was seeing those videos of. And also got to look at if you get a bottle of, or a bottle, a container, a container of pepper from a store that's been whatever they do to it compared to grinding your own fresh peppercorn, grind your own fresh peppercorn and smell it. You won't sneeze. Go buy a container of pepper from the store and smell it. You will sneeze. That You know what I mean? That little difference right there. Interesting. There's probably all sorts of other shit in the manufacturing and packaging process that yeah. works with you. The one uh, other thing, when you mentioned uh, it keeps you up, Eagle Gardens, shout out to Eagle. He did 24 hour streams on 420 several times. Yeah, and I've been there. <laughs> yeah, I've been on a couple of them too. He, at the end of one of them, I think Sequence was calling him out like, oh, Eagle's fading out. He's passing out. He just started eating hot wings and hot sauce and putting hot sauce and everything. And I was like, well, is that like a thing for real? And apparently, you know, it, it stimulates you. It like fucking wakes your ass up. Oh, you it'll wake your ass up. Definitely. The little, the little, uh, brrr, when you veer off the highway, the things that wake you up, brrr, those are cool, but hot, hot sauce plus those. You're getting there. You know what I mean? <laughs> I call them ass ticklers, or at least that's what my uh, buddy's dad called them when I was growing up. Those fucking speed bumps are the warning things on the side of the highways yeah. they have in it's the United States to let you know you're going off the road. Tip, yeah, for, for safety measures, it's when there's too much snow on the ground and you veer off the lane, you hear it. But for regular Americans who like to have a good time, you're fucking, or me who was overworked for many years. I used to, that's how I traveled every day. I used to fucking stay on that lane, you know? <laughs> Better than hitting an, another car, I guess, and uh, or going into a median or something like that. So it does, it has saved lives. I, I'm a, a fan of that kind of safety. We, even in California where we don't get snow, we have like a uh, reflective ones because where I'm at from in Ohio, those would get knocked off the ground because we have plows that would come around to pick the snow up. But in California, like they have these almost uh, like probably like an inch high, uh, by like two inches long, little almost like reflective, um, like or yellow, orangish, um, basically like pucks in between the lanes. And so if you start to veer into the next lane on all of the lanes, like center, middle, because we have like fucking four or five lanes all going one direction here. Like where I'm at in Ohio, if you had four lanes, that was like both directions. You had two going north, two going south, right? Here it's like you got four, five, six going south and like four, five, six more going north. And so uh, it's probably good that people know, oh, I'm accidentally... You know, there's people fucking texting and driving, like smoking their vape pen, fucking drinking oh. beer or whatever. Like there's so many people doing shit on the road that they shouldn't be doing. So it's any little bit like that that can help us. Is, uh, oh, those little bumps on the road are good for everybody. But yeah, I watched 71 get remodeled. Like that was, I, I traveled up and down 71 for three years and I watched it get completely remodeled. Like I've been, I, I'm a stonemason. I've do it. If you wish it, we grant it. Like whatever kitchen, bathroom, vanity, walls, kit, whatever. It doesn't even matter. Do if you wish, we will grant it. Yeah. That, I've been doing it for years. You know? It's a, hey, I respect everybody in the trades. It's an amazing thing that you can make shit happen with your hands. And like you're saying, like, it amazes me when I drive through some of these, like going from San Diego to Arizona, you go through like these mountain passes and like somebody fucking laid that road down. Like that used to just be a fucking barren ass set of fucking mountains that people were hiking Lewis and Clark style over, you know, horse and carriage or whatever, you know, on the foot. And for so long, it was just like unable for people to pass easily. And now like they've got tunnels, they have, they've found the lowest point in the hill. They made a road and it's, you know, maintained year round and, the glory of uh, modern society, I guess, in a sense, uh, that we're able to, you know, travel pretty freely. Uh, like I said, there's a, a lot of fucked up things and shit going on, but at the same time, we have some beautiful things. We're able to, for the most part, travel free and, and do what the fuck we want to do, as long as we're not harming others. Uh, we get to live our lives, grow our plants, do our thing. Absolutely, Jack. That's what I'm saying. I've, I've seen a lot of change in my travel, but uh, the main thing is, 
do as you want done to you. You know what I mean? The golden rule. If we can remember that, life is too simple. Like, people forget that thing. Do unto others as you want done to you. That's the simplest thing, the easiest way to explain it. It's a great way. I heard uh, somebody else say, like, there's a platinum rule. Treat everybody as if it's like you living an alternative life. Uh, yes. And I think that's another way because a lot of people maybe you don't even have that. Uh, I don't know. It's, a, it's a, an alternative way of thinking about it. But, yeah, I think uh, one of the ways to do that is sharing. It's like we were just talking about earlier. I'll send you some, you'll send me some, and eventually we'll get yeah. to growing them. And it's a way to keep this community strong and alive. And I think ultimately overcome the uh, corporate <laughs> booth pushers because a lot of us uh, will end up smoking some of that stuff some days and uh, not really enjoy it, but be relegated to it. And ideally, we don't have to. You know, if we grow our own, if we have networks, I see people in Canada all the time. I can't wait until this is like the thing in the US. Somebody's like, oh man, I'm dry between harvests. And then somebody will be like, hey, What's your address? And then they send them an ounce or something, you know, whatever, because they can legally send an ounce in the mail. So it's, oh, I got an extra ounce and they're going to hook that person up. And like with no expectation of payment or whatever, like it's just like people, the homies are hooking each other up. And I got to say oh. X, shout out to X, because that's where I'm seeing that happen. Um, that community is very strong over there. If, you, if you're not on X for cannabis stuff, they're not fucking banning anybody. It's the only major platform where you can go on. Post. I post this show every fucking week and we haven't had any strikes violations warnings not a fucking issue we can comment people can comment afterwards they can fucking share it it's full on full length everything is there as it should be and um yeah, I've YouTube been dreaming fucks about... with us instagram fucks with us all these other fucking shows man all these other channels mess with us in terms of like we get warnings for this or that or whatever so um there's a lot of really good people on X in the cannabis community for sure. So if you're not on there, it took me a while. I, I was late to the party. I should have gotten there sooner. Uh, Twitter is what I guess it used to be called. X.com is simpler to type in. Yeah. But it just when you type in X.com, it goes to Twitter.com. So it's still fucking Twitter. So Yeah, Elon bought Twitter. And I've been dreaming about Elon for almost four years now. I used to hate him. And then I started dreaming about him and protecting him in my dreams. So, but yeah. He's he's doing good now. He's helping us spread the truth, and he's actually investing into corporations that are, if you look at what they're behind, like, if you still think you're lost in space and you're spinning uncontrollably, separated, just think of this. It takes, you know how long it, if you would count to one trillion, one, two, three. How long would it take you to count to 1 trillion? It would take you 32,000 years. That's 1 25th of the way to the closest star that they say is in our galaxy. So if you don't believe in geocentrism, the real, the biblical, biblical cosmology, now is your time. You should look into it because heliocentrism, Copernicus, demonology, vatican sorcery all that is false so there's a million different versions of false realities and then there's the truth which is written in the bible now is your time to look into it and learn it i've you been looking good. into a lot of, of ancient stuff and uh i don't know <laughs> talk about that kind of stuff on this podcast but uh I, I don't know where we're at i just feel like there's there's some lies to you look into kind of the old school like world's fairs and stuff like there's some really crazy stuff when they said they, they built during horse and buggy it looks like roman greco stuff it's not a conspiracy theory you can look it up there's a lot me, of uh, vi videos and I'm pictures sorry, on I'm it i'm sorry to interrupt you but let listen. him cook let him cook man you've been talking all night i'm yeah. sorry brother yeah. you gotta let and, noah go and, off and he's been just, quiet over there I'm waiting just, i'm just saying like hey I, you know i don't know i i've i've been i've been in that kind of communities as well and i don't i don't know if we're living on a in a ball or a flat realm i just i'm i'm open to all possibilities i just i've never been up there so i can't say and I do, do you know stuff what? from a scientific point of view, but I, uh, I, at some point you just see a lot of, of stuff and there's like, man, there's some really crazy stuff right by you, Jack, in the San Diego area. I'm going to send you a link of some of the old school stuff from the World's Fair and the San Diego stuff that was supposedly built at, like the, at the turn of the century. And they say that a lot of the stuff that was built with it was built out of like staff and temporary materials. But this stuff is all permanent and it's all stuff from the World's Fair, not a conspiracy theory, right around you. I wish I could go there and look at it. But there's a lot of crazy stuff from the World's Fair in San Diego, California. But yeah, I would love bro, to check, check it out. out. Let, me, 
Let me tell you one cheat code about World's Fairs. They lie to everybody and they say, if you look at Wikipedia or any um, mainstream media source for history, they tell you about Chicago Fire or One Great Fire. Yes. You know, what? the World's Fairs, I think what they were doing, they were gathering elites into certain areas and destroying different populations because they said that each World's Fair was built in one year and then destroyed two years later. That's yes, a lie. Yes, they do. I, That's I a agree lie. with that. I That's agree a with lie. that. And, and the research that I've – I'm pretty deep into that, and the research that I've seen says that. But like I said, there's still buildings now that they, they can't really explain. Like at the Chicago World's Fair, for instance – there was a crazy, like, moving sidewalk in, like, the late, in That's 1893. An electrical, and an electrical sidewalk around the whole thing. Not a conspiracy theory. You can look it up. There's a lot of, like... There was a lot of... There was electric cars in the 1920s, bro. They there was a lot of crazy stuff. Before That's why I well, guess. Listen, but here's listen. the thing. I'll say this, Noah. I want to clear one thing up on the show because this I do try to keep some of this, you know, based on... There, there's some scientists. You know, this is a cannabis uh, show. Not even just the cannabis thing. <laughs> We're talking about the Earth potentially being flat or what shape it is. I definitely think it's fucking spherical or, or you know, oblong, oval, whatever the fuck. It's pear-shaped potentially, but it's certainly not flat. I've flown both directions around, and you can go to China east or west. And if you just fly in a fucking straight line, you're eventually going to get there from the U.S. And if there was an ice wall, somebody always memes about this, the cats would have fucking pushed everything off the edge. People would be given tours at the fucking... If there was an edge of the world, people would be giving you the edge of the world goddamn tour. You know, it's well, like, hold on. I, I didn't you say that. Close, I didn't say it was flat, and I don't, and I don't know if I necessarily believe it's flat. I don't think I believe it's flat. Uh, but like I said, is I just don't know. Um, I've been to Hawaii three times, so I've been on long plane. I'm getting ready to go in a few months, so I've been on some long plane rides, and I've been all over the place myself. I'm put on planes probably 30, 40 trips, and uh, I, I don't think it, I don't necessarily think it's flat either, but. I don't think there's a wrong with anybody having any questions. You know, it, I look at it like this. If you told me like that, I didn't grow, that I hadn't grown weed before. It really wouldn't matter to me because I know that I have. So if somebody is questioning whether or not I can grow weed, I'm just like, okay, <laughs> well, you. I can show you some Thank pictures. You. I can give you some advice. I can show you some stuff. But, you know, ultimately if you haven't seen it, why should you believe it? Unless I've, you know, I've shown it. But so, there is some st some reasons to question, and I think anybody can question anything. That definition of science should be able to question anything. And so, you should. You should question everything. Yeah. Be skeptical. And I do. But, but I, the I'm thing not, is, like, I've, I've looked into this one deeply. I think the Earth is flat. I'm not, like I said, I don't, I'm open. Oh, everything. I thought I thought that was something that you mentioned. No, when no, no, no. We were no, talking no, about no, the no, ancient no. biblical stuff. So I just wanted to clear that one up. Not me. That wasn't me. That wasn't me that said that. Everyone talks about how they've looked into this deeply, and they've gone to... Flat Earth Society PSYOPs websites. And those are driven, those are Google algorithms that know that you're about even to Even if think... you use DuckDuckGo, and you don't even have to use it. You can use your own in inductive Duck reasoning. Go outside with a telescope. You can predict where every single star is in the solar system. You can look at every single other planet. They're all spherical. And you can know exactly where every oh. single one of the things. They, done, they, no. they did it so many years ago. Galileo and the fucking telescope. They knew this shit no, before no, 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 no. that they even sailed no. the seas. Okay. Hey, I, go, I think go, you're probably go, right, Jack. I, I just no, want no, you no, to, no. Say, Jack, to say that. Jack, Jack, just listen well, I to don't me. Know. I'm just listening, listen bro. We've let you talk all night. Go go Google a Nikon P1000 or a P900 zoomed in on a star and it'll show you the real image, not the NASA image because NASA and Disney work together and they show you animations that's why Stars this whole are world gas. Is... they'll flicker so when you zoom in on it it's going to be a flickering you're thing. not listening you're not listening to me. just go nikon p1000 p100 any zoom because what what nasa and disney shows you is in a, animations my buddy nikon. is a photographer i could look at it we do nikon. this all the time I'll, look i will i will instant mess i will direct message you real scientific data i i'm not about talking what? about about uh, about real observations real provable scientific data not not people who say science and they talk proclaim things because anyone can use these words that's that's where we live in is it's the world we live in how how good you're able to speak but real scientists they observe and they come up with conclusions they pre they they create their hypothesis before it and then they prove it afterwards and then the actors like neil degrasse bill nye 
Bill Co- uh, Brian Cox, all these actors. I won't not quote even... any of them. Just go watch Professor Dave, and he'll explain all the shit. There's a bunch of different people that can explain it really simply. It doesn't need to be super complicated. All right, listen. Professor Dave is a – he failed from – um, he's a failed musician. He failed from music school. He's not even a professor. He got – he – he got kicked out of music school and then YouTube started sponsoring him so he could combat people who came with real science. That guy uses scientism and heliocentric sorcery. He's not, I'm a real scientist. I will prove to you what I say and I will show you the data. This guy, he uses fallacies and indirect, He, bro, Side Dave, what's his name? I don't even remember his name. Say it again. Uh, there's more than one professor, but there's Professor. I, I'm, Dave. I'm just professor describing. Dave, he's a what... failed musician. He got kicked out of music school, and he's an but, actor. Bro, I grew up. I was into the stars. I looked at them every single night. I had a telescope. This was something that I was a fan of. And the reason that we can predict where all this stuff is is because we're on a round planet that revolves no. around the sun, brother. I'm sorry. No, this we one we'll have to agree to disagree on. I'm going to end it at that. I'll let you talk for like 10 minutes and you, you all gave right. all of your explanations. We're not going to get anywhere past that. That's I love fine. you, brother, but we can agree hey. to disagree on stuff. Professor Dave is an actor. He Whatever. failed from music school. He really did. Go it's look not, him up. And that's fine. His explanation isn't the one and only. I'm just saying I literally grew up interested okay, in the so stars. This is something that I've independently explored for years and years and years of my own I, life. I'm not going to argue about anything it. else with you. I love you and I love this show, but the reason I believe in this is because I tried to disprove it and I was getting angry about it. And then they showed me where to look. A real researcher, a real cognitive mind should go look and then say, hey, this is true or it's not. If Do you, you know anyone know- who's flown around the world? Because I've met several people and i've flown multiple directions around the planet and i could tell I've you a, we wouldn't be able a, to do I've it i've been on a plane almost 50 times i'm military my father lives in italy my i'm polish i've traveled almost 50 times and every time i look down the farther away you get from land the more flat it looks okay with my own eyes observation i can send you footage from my camera that I recorded, the, the the sun followed me when I traveled from America to Italy. But what I want to say is, if you want to learn the truth, go to flatearthdave.com. 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 All right, we got it the first four times, brother. I'm going to have to mute you if you're just going to spam the show. I hate, I hate hey, to do it. We got a beautiful uh, garden, and you're not letting us talk about it because you're just spamming uh, us, bro. I'm not going to have to, like, this I is the type of shit that ruins the whole conversation. I ain't you just said it five times in a row. Let Noah talk about his garden, I'm please. Sorry. I'm going to mute you. you. I love you, bro. All right. Noah, please tell us what we're looking at. This is a beautiful uh, garden. Yeah. Uh, this right here is that lemon cherry gelato I was talking about. These are a couple of uh, triangle kush crossed with uh, purple urkel. That's uh, T1000. And uh, this is a, this right here is a grill with move floor, GG4. And that is in the, in the back corner <laughs> is my uh, Girl Scout cookie. Got a couple uh, uh, do- dosi lottos right here. Did you turn this the camera is- to the side? Uh, yeah. Is it there we go. Like there we go. That's yeah. And that's dosi lotto. Uh, these are two GG4. And then this is another uh, lemon cherry uh, gelato. And uh, yeah. You said it's turning uh, out better this time? What's that? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so this is the second one, but yeah, this one right here, this one, it's hard, you know, with the light is in here. That's like almost black. You can kind of see the difference in those two right there. That's uh, the lemon cherry gelato, and then that's the uh, GG4, and it's you know a lot greener than that. But uh, yeah, I'm uh, I'm kind of a conspiracy guy, and I never try and get into it, you know, because I know this is a, a weed show, so. But I'm I'll, all for know, believe whatever you want. Just don't totally, fucking cut people off and then spam no. yell websites yeah. five times in a row. You know that's where I, I just yeah, got to draw a I, line. I hear you, man. Especially yeah, like it, you had your garden up and you were trying to show us what we were looking at right now, which is looking beautiful. Well, I was trying to, I was stuff. trying to weed it up. You know what I mean? Because yeah, no, that's what we needed. Forced. We needed a change. I was like, oh, thank goodness, totally. uh, a change of pace. I'm gonna spotlight it, and then maybe we could just let the the good vibes roll. You know. Totally, man. But, uh, yeah, no, uh, been putting in a lot of work and, uh, 
in the, with, the, with, with summer coming, I'm getting ready to, uh, this is going to be my last, I'm turning one of my lights off. I always do it in summer and it's always tough. And, uh, there's a local uh, place I go on 420 and they always have new cuts. And so I'm going to go there and then I got to get new, another cut. So it's like, I'm uh, inevitably, I'm going to have to punt one of my strains, kind of like what the guy earlier was talking about in his bathroom. But what I do is I'll just grow it up. And then when it gets to be like, you know, big enough to clone, I'll, I'll clone it. And then once it's the clone's root, I'll just take, get rid of the other one just so that I have it still in my stable. You know what I'm saying? That's how I do that. I'm going to have to do that because I have so much stuff. That's why I got rid of the lemon cherry gelato because it just wasn't as good as, you know, the GG4 or uh, some of the other stuff I have that I'm not, it's not even in here right now. So it's like, yeah, you always tough decisions. You know what I mean? When you're keeping clones, you always have to make tough decisions when you're getting new stuff. And I got a, uh, a Sherba Seal plant that I just got and a, an Oreos. And uh, I've heard different, you know, different things. I know some guys in Michigan who've been growing the Oreos and, you know, some guys will say, Oh, it's not got as much turf. So this stuff, but then my buddy, you know, he showed it to me and he grew it and that's what I got the cut from. And it, and it was phenomenal. So, and then this, this T1000, that was a new one. Oh, where is it? Um, you know, let's see, that's the thing somewhere in here. I have to look somewhere in here. I have a wedding cake. Maybe that's in my bedroom right now. That's what I'm saying. I said, I got an, a lot of different strains. So, but yeah, I'll, I'll shut up. I just wanted to kind of weed it up. It was kind of getting off course a little bit. And... Yeah, no, man, we appreciate it. I always love looking oh. at your garden. It's always cool oh, to see because you... you've shown it pretty consistently at the, uh, usually the tail end of the shows. I think this is like when your lights come on or when you get to go out totally. do a little work in the and... garden. And that's the thing, like I'm into a lot of different things too, but I, this show is about cannabis. And so I always, and I love it. You know, I love that. I love growing weed and I love people that are passionate about it. And I, you know, I always want to, to show it off and I want other people to show their off. I was totally nerding out, checking out everybody's stuff. I love the, the, the automation you guys are talking about. I love all that stuff, man. I'm, you know, I'm more passionate about growing cannabis than just about anything, man. And, uh, Dude, they'll probably they'll probably have when they come in me and take and carry me out when I'm not here no more, man. They're probably plants in my house, man. If I can if I can grow them, I'm gonna keep growing forever. Because you just like you guys were saying earlier, sometimes that stuff in the in the stores, it ain't the same, man. It ain't got the soul. You know what I mean? And I, I'm not no you know best grower in the world, nothing, but I can grow good weed, and I I, I just love it. You know, it's sometimes the weed I get from the store, man. Sometimes it's just like. They, they, they say, and this is like 28%, like this is not 28%. If this is 28%, then the stuff that I have must be, you know, whatever, because I get way more stone off of this, but it could just be my own personal stuff. But other people say the same stuff too. The different but, ratios, uh, even like you might even have an 18 percenter, but it's got like five or 10% terpenes and esters dude, and other, you know, that's the T1000. Entourage. That's the T1000. And the T1000 is so funky and it's not even a, a big yielder. I did put these two, these two are in sevens and I gave it like a nice section, but, uh, yeah, I bet that's a big deal too, man. That's a, it, dude, if it don't taste good, you're, you're definitely gone. That's the number one to me is the taste. I'm with you there too. I will accept a little bit of like a funkier, like I do like some of the GMO stuff that might be like body odor esque or oniony mm -hmm. or garlicky. But it's just like uh, it has a time and a place. You, for me, it's usually like nighttime or dabs or when I'm wanting a little bit heavier uh, medicine. You know, we were talking earlier about sometimes the medicinal stuff has those bitter elements to it that are associated with maybe the medical effect of it. Like gas, I think, is one that a lot of people might not actually find ultra pleasant on the nose. I love the smell of like actual gasoline long before I ever smoked cannabis for whatever reason. I just... When I was at the gas station, I was like, oh, this smells nice. I know I probably shouldn't like the smell of it, but I like the smell of skunk too. So I was probably predestined to be a stoner or cannabis user ultimately someday. But it looks like we're hitting that time. we got one minute left, so I'm going to pass it around the panel first to Matthew Gates. Yeah, hey, I, uh, I also agree that um, uh, we had a, a really interesting time this episode, but I also feel like 
feel like you've inspired me to look a lot more into some of the seeds that we talked about at the beginning. Um, and maybe we could talk some more about like different cultivars or new things up, up and coming. I had a conversation with somebody about this. and I don't want to take too much time, but uh, that might be a cool thing to talk about next session. And if you want to learn more about pest management and a holistic approach, You can check me out at zenthanol.com for professional inquiries, youtube.com slash zenthanol for my videos, and uh, stay tuned. because I have my Everswarm analysis coming up, and also you can check me out at the first smoke of the day coming up uh, sometime in the near future, I think, um, on their YouTube channel. So a little teaser for that. Always cool. It's always uh, strange when you're used to doing live podcasts and I'm just going out and then having like a pre-recorded one that gets edit and uh, put out later at a later date. The editing was quite nice. I'm pre I'm very impressed. They seem very professional. And from all the, you know, marketing and stuff that I see, they seem to really get good traction on multiple social media outlets and things like that. So I'm happy that you're getting to interact with them. I think Brandon has been over there as well. And, uh, seem like pretty good guys so they seem to be trying to get good content out there with good people so i'm happy you're getting your you got your chance there and the people will get to see that soon and last and certainly not least to the panels who are still with us this evening is noah the groa yeah i had a lot of fun uh checking on everybody's grows uh some interesting conversations and uh i was very uh interested in paying close attention to the seeds uh that's awesome what a really cool thing for a grower to be able or anybody to be able to go and get seeds like that and uh, be able to what a great time we're living in man stuff like that would never have happened as far as i would have known 20 years ago so yeah i'm no other grower and uh check me out on instagram and i'll see everybody next week a great one thank you so much noah for coming and uh i do like to you know mess around and delve into my own conspiracies and usually in the off time, not necessarily on the show. And I find it's interesting at times, but uh, not necessarily the most productive at all for the show during when we we're trying to get some cannabis content out there. Um, I typically try to steer things back onto the rails uh, when we get off topic too far. And I think tonight I let it go a little bit too far. And I don't mean to put that on any of the guests or any of the panelists, um, but I, I could have you know, taking it a little bit different direction a little bit sooner and probably should have. I think if maybe Dr. MJ was here, he would have uh, probably been pushing back on some of the things as well. But I do try to, you know, tonight I wanted it to be an open panel. And uh, sometimes, you know, you got to let the people speak their minds. And uh, obviously what panelists say when they come on the show doesn't represent all of us in the show or this YouTube channel in particular. But we just uh, like to keep it open and have people come on and share their different thoughts and opinions. And, you know, people can look into things independently on their own. And that's what I'm not a, I didn't mean to kick him off. I meant to mute him. So sorry, sacred. When I did that, it like threw him out of the show. I don't want to make it look like, oh, this is a censorship thing. But um, it ended up being right around the end of the show. And Noah got to show off his garden. And so it was a, I feel like fair enough transition. He said, uh, like, much love, Jack. Sorry. Or whatever. I didn't mean to do whatever. And I said, much love to you, whatever. No bad blood here. So I just want to, uh, you know, for anybody who may have been a little bit off put in that certain section, I feel like for the most part of the show, we talked a lot about genetics and, and seeds and things like that. So I don't feel too bad, but, uh, you know, try to avoid getting confrontational at times. And like I said, we all are entitled to our own opinions, even if I disagree with somebody vehemently, you know, people can look into their own yeah, you know, things on their own time. And uh, I will say there's modern society exists because a lot of good science and a lot of good work from, you know, people even like himself, you know, he doing stonework and, and masonry and things like that. Like, uh, shout out to all the uh, tradesmen and trade people and everybody who makes the you know world tick, you know, whether you're a nurse, doctor, lawyer, whoever you are, wherever you're at, shout out to you for listening to the show and uh, hanging in with us. If you've made it this far in the episode, you are one of the very few percentage on YouTube. The podcast listeners, you will all be here because you guys listen to like 99% of the show every single time. So shout out to you. If you want to find out any more about me and my stuff, I'm at Jack Greenstock on Instagram. Jack underscore Greenstock is my backup account there because they are into the censorship and deleting accounts kind of thing. So my account on X or formerly Twitter is Jack underscore Greenstock. That's where like I exclusively am posting my content now at this point. Um, I post a show there tomorrow morning, as well as all the podcast platforms where many of you might be listening from. Shout out to everybody who's in the live chat. So with us, we still got a bunch jumping back and forth. I see Smot Poker and uh, Jeffro420, many others, uh, APM, Kicking a Cup. What about Bob? So many good people in the chat. Much love to all of you and everybody who listens afterwards, YouTube, wherever. Uh, this is a great community. And 
really nothing ever is going to get me down. And like I said, I, I'm always happy to have open discussions. And uh, next week, I think we'll probably get back into some science or maybe a gross specific topic and just have the uh, panelists. But I did have a great time this evening with the open panelists. So shout out to everybody who came on, Cheddar Bob, Sacred. Um, we had several others, Dog Doctor. Um, I don't know if I can remember any other off the top of my head, but I'm sorry if I forgot anybody, but it's been uh, two plus hours on this show. So you could uh, find us where you can find us. Peace and love. Till next time, keep on growing. Catch you all next week. Grow love, everybody.